funny? I can't hear anything. Me neither. Well, at least you could hear me. You can hear you. Can you hear us now? How about now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now, Lou. Okay. Okay, that, that was that thing. All right. Thank you. Uh, All right. What I was saying was, is that uh, when there are volunteers here to present, I usually take them first. And tonight we have uh, the Committee for the Environment uh, here, it's like the majority of the committee is here, and uh, they are going to present uh, about a village greenway project that they've been working on, and they have uh, some information to present to the public and to the board of trustees. Uh, so, Kate, are you going to do the presentation? Okay, please avail yourself of the mic. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> So we, um, it's up on the backup, but it, it, there's a lot. So thanks. You're going to need hard copy uh, to follow along. Okay, they're slippery. Quality. Okay, and and then I did not number the pages, so you know you're going to have to be very alert. Thank you. <laughs> and this is a uh, so that is a sort of a. Um, Table of contents to help you find, oh, um, you know, and be clear what we're what we're looking at. Okay, and so I have some others. Does, um, yeah, that's what I figured. With our committee can the best to you, and um, you know who is that? Who is that? I have a set. I just need that one. Yeah, thank you. Got it. You got a set, Gino. You know the engineer. You need one. Dan, do you have this electronically? Yeah, it's going to be up on the screen. Yeah, it's on the back. Yeah, once um, they start making their presentation, yeah, yeah. I okay. will share the uh, share my screen. Excuse me. Thank you, thank you, sir. I didn't get that. Oh, yeah. I didn't get that. Okay. Oh wait. No, no. Kate. 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 Yes. We want one more. We're missing one more. Oh, David. David. One more up here. Sorry. Did we miss somebody? Yeah, you missed me. I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Good. Make it bigger for the old guys, like me. Okay, let's begin. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Thank you for having us present this to you tonight. Uh, I'm David Friedman, I'm Chair of the Committee for the Environment. One of uh, the major accomplishments of our committee this year is uh, the development and promotion of the idea of a mammalian mania. It is not a new idea. Various uh, versions of this idea have been around and have actually appeared in the village's comprehensive plans as far back as the late 1980s. And it's specifically recommended uh, as uh, something to consider in the newly enacted 2023 Village Comprehensive Plan. Uh, but for some reason, this great idea has never gotten real traction. Uh, as in, we haven't actually moved forward to implement it as a, as a village. But we hope that that's about to change. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes uh, tonight uh, Describing what the Romantic Greenway is and why it's important. And then I'm going to hand over the mic to Kate De Hayes, the chair of the committee's open space subcommittee, who will fill in the details and get specific as to what we're asking the board to do tonight. So the Romantic Greenway, as we envisioned it, is a string of best pocket parks 
along the Romanian and Shell Lake rivers. Many, oh, of questions, uh, many of the stream banks. I'm sorry, that's me. I'm sorry, give me sorry, one give second. Okay. Thank you. It's a good thing to have somebody under 30 here. <laughs> right. Technical support is always in place. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. So many of the land, land parcels along these streams are used fully um, either by the village or by the county, but they are currently in terrible repair. And the slide that Kate has will show you uh, some of the, the problems that that you will see if you walk along these stream banks as the committee has done. Uh, the parcels are overgrown with invasives. They are cluttered with litter. Uh, the stream banks are eroded. There are culverts that are broken and leaking silt and other um, foreign materials into the streams. And the land is really inaccessible for the general public. The idea of the greenway is to rehabilitate these parcels, clearing them uh, of invasives, uh, clearing them of overgrowth, repairing the culverts, contouring them so that they actually hold water when water comes through them, planting them with native plants, which will be a habitat for pollinators, and creating walking trails so you could actually walk from one end of the park to the other. Uh, there are some privately owned parcels, which will have to be either bought or taken by eminent domain or at least having easements obtained. Uh, so that's a little complicated. Um, but in the end, we envision uh, basically a walkable park, like the High Line or like uh, the Belt Line in Atlanta, hmm. where you can walk the entire length of the Romantic and Shellbreak River. Uh, in, in in the village, and hopefully connect with similarly similar parks in Harrison, the Tamil Marina, and uh, the Leatherstocking Trail in the village of Larchmont. Why is this important? Well, first of all, uh, and and there are a couple of really very positive things that that, that this park could do. First of all, recreation, obviously. Uh, this is open space. This is open space, particularly in areas of the community that don't have open space, people that don't have places to recreate. Uh, if the, the, the portions of the, the rivers that, that are not overgrown and in terrible repair are actually quite pretty. And you could have a you could actually spend a very nice day walking uh, this park when it's finished if we can we pull this off. Uh, it would be a, a habitat for native plants uh, and, and pollinators. But very importantly for this community, it would serve an important flood control function. There are plenty of studies that show that a well-maintained stream bank, a well-contoured stream bank, when it's planted with the right plants, acts as a sponge when flood waters, when heavy rains come through. Uh, these parcels do not do that right now because they are in terrible shape and they're not planted properly, they're not contoured properly. They're actually contributing to the problem rather than helping solve it. So um, we think that uh, that there's this, this is a win-win uh, if we can do it. And we can do it. Um, and the board can play a major role. The good news is that there is now money available for this kind of project. We've been looking very hard at what kind of uh, grant uh, money uh, is available. This is potentially expensive. We don't want, and we don't think that the village residents should bear the brunt of this cost. But since it is a flood control project that serves the entire area, uh, we believe that it qualifies for a variety of grants under the Long Island Sound Study, under the Climate Leadership, and through Action Act, there's a $4.2 billion bond act that was passed uh, 
two years ago by the state. It was a federal infrastructure act. Um, we think we can be creative in terms of finding funds that will largely pay for this, or at least pay for a significant portion of it. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn the mic over to Kate, who has been spearheading our efforts and has a lot more detail and also has some specifics as well as to what we're asking the board to do. Hey, thank you so much, everybody. Um, so I'm Kate DeHayes from the Committee for the Environment. And um, I you know, put most of what I have to say into this handout. So we'll just walk our way through it. Um, so the, the first page, um, I've given you a table of contents because I did not know the difference. this. And it, you know, there's a little going back and forth, but I don't want you to get lost. Hopefully that will help you. Um, so on my first page, I pretty much reiterate what David said, what are we trying to do here? Um, you know, the uh, the LWRP, you know, identifies the, the rivers as tremendous resources, and they haven't really been treated that way, but they are. They're a resource in many, in many ways. Um, they are a resource for our, com our community to have passive recreation. Um, they're a resource as for ecologically uh, for bird life, wildlife, and so forth. Um, it's also known that what, um, wetland soils actually absorb carbon and hold carbon. That might not be the concern of people that live in the Marinic, but it's a bigger concern, and it's a concern of you know and some of the entities that are um, offering money as far as climate change is concerned. And then um, more and more, it's understood that, uh, like as David mentioned, uh, floodplains and so forth um, are green infrastructure that they absorb and filter stormwater, that they provide stormwater storage during a flood event and so forth. So the first page, Mamaroneck Greenways, if you don't have a handout, it's on the back up, you can look it up there. Um, uh, basically sort of lays out the big picture because we're covering a lot of geography here. So it's, you know, it's kind of, if you don't know your, the all the ins and outs of where the rivers are, this, you know, might not be obvious to you. Um, so that's page one, and on the back of it, um, just a handy reference. This is a this is floodplain data from Westchester County. Um, the the orange is the hundred year floodplain. The red is the five hundred year floodplain. Just you know, this is what we're this is where we are. This is what we're in. We are all in the floodplain here, um, and that's where we're operating. So we're very very aware of that. Um, the third page is. This is an extract from the LWRP, which for those of you who are not familiar, this is basically the, the, the plan that was written for the coastal and river, you know, the, the coastal plain, and that includes the rivers. It's written in 1985. And it name checks all, the, all of these spots, um, including the Rockland Pocket. And that's why we started there. We used this as support, the Rockland Pocket as an entryway to, to the river. Um, and it talks about the various sites um, along the Sheldrake from, uh, they call it the, the throughway, um, the Sheldrake throughway pocket up to the Salt Shed and Bug Walker Park. So that's that's worth noting. And it's also important because New York State, this is a New York State approved uh, plan that was approved long ago. And so it has, it has a course. It is actually what the Harbor Coastal Zone looks at when they do their consistency recommendations. So it has, it has importance, and the fact that at least a portion of the project that we're discussing is in there um, is is very useful. Uh, so I'm so I'm told. Okay. So now what we have is oh, there seems to be a page missing. Oh no, it's on the back. Okay. So there are three detailed maps, um, and the maps these these areas we have walked with our committee. We have studied them. We have worked in these areas. We know them very, very well, um, in and out. So that's what I'm going to be. Those, that's what I'm going to be referring back to when I take you through some of the specific sites that we're looking at. So, um, so beginning with the southwest map, the first map there, um, you'll see site number one, which is a tiny little thing. That is the Rockland Pocket Preserve that we we completely, almost well, almost completely, we do get a little help here and there, but mostly with volunteer labor. And if you anybody knew it, it was completely overgrown. It was a mess. 
It was full of garbage. It was full of broken glass. It was a disaster. We got the invasives out and we put in, um, it's, you know, I don't know how many. I, I could say thousands, probably is. Oh, yeah, Jen says thousands. She was down there. We did the work. <laughs> Everybody here did the work, you know, digging this stuff out, planting trees. And, um, you know, so that is the gateway that is as described in the LWRP. And um, if you look at the next, the, this page, your first page uh, calls Rockland Pocket Preserve, there's some photographs, what it looked like on day one before we started working. Um, you know, what it looked like in the spring, you can see the, um, the milkweed, you can see the penstone in blooming, you can see the oak trees that were planted there. The sign that was put up in the summer that was uh, actually designed by my husband and, um, and then it was fabricated uh, by the village. A view of the sheldrake, which is absolutely stunning. Um, I took some friends down there, is that it? Yeah, I took some friends down there who lived in Mamaroneck for 20 years, like right in the neighborhood, you know, live in my neighborhood. They were, they were like, oh my God, I never knew the river was here. It's so pretty, it's so gorgeous. So it's opening that up. Um, and there's a picture of the, of the pathways with stone laid out along it. And I will just say that since I have, since this has been done, and I go down there pretty often, I don't see littering like we saw before. There's a little bit of stuff that blows up, but not much. I see uh, Vincent's flatbed trucks pulled up and they're like hanging out, you know, on the bench having their lunch. You know, it, I, lots of neighbors coming by. It's being used and it's being appreciated. So that's where we're at. Um, and now at the bottom right, there's a picture of a crosswalk. And that is a picture of a crosswalk and ride for the people that walk along uh, the Playland Parkway. And um, so we're going to need a few of those. Because if we're going to have people walking along, there's places where you have to cross the river, I mean, across the road. And so we'll need that. So if we flip over, you're going to see the rock in the Feldrake bird walk. Okay. And um, on this one, I'm going to have hats off to Lou because he went with me and a few other people in on a very cold day in December. Quite the adventure. Went, what? It's quite the adventure. Yeah, we had the adventure. <laughs> and we scrambled around down there. So so I've kind of mapped it out. Now, if you look at if you look at the, the page of pictures, everybody with me here? We, okay. The risk it's called Rockland Sheldrake Bird Walk. That's what we're calling it. And on the little map, you'll see I've got a crosswalk there because we want people to cross um, to cross Rockland and go down in there. And by the way, that wouldn't be a bad idea for the school kids and whatnot that are crossing there either. So it's pretty steep. You've got to get down there. If you look at picture one of the bird walk, that is a view from the town of Mamaroneck on the shore of the town of Mamaroneck looking back up at the bird walk. It's very flat in the town of Mamaroneck. It floods there. And, you know, that's an overflow space. It was very wet. But if you can see in that picture on the Mamaroneck side, it's steep. So part of what we would propose is to lower the bank there to let water flow into the interior space more easily. It's a wetland, but the water, because of you know various things, the water doesn't go there real easily. There's a pic picture two is a picture of the interior space. So you get the idea that what would happen there would be it would be a park, you know, uh, it's a it's a you know bird bird sanctuary um, with with walking paths and so forth. But it would also be overflow space. It does flood. But water would go in there more easily, and um, I think that would be beneficial for the village. Also, what's growing down there isn't all the, the best. There's a lot of knotweed, there's multiflora, roses and things. Here's a picture of a beautiful tree that's completely covered with a vine. So, you know, we get the vines off, and that would be part of the restoration. Um, and there's a picture of me standing with the people from Audubon. Uh, looking at the uh, wood ducks and so forth. She was very excited about the wood ducks. And so, and they, and to whatever extent Audubon can partner with signage and that kind of stuff, they're very excited to do that. Um, okay, so let me see here. Uh, I hope this isn't, this is, you know, we may run out of time, but you'll see. So on the back of that, it's the Sheldrake walkway. So let's look back at our map in case we're getting lost. Um, our map is the, make sure I've got it here. 
um, Marina Greenways. Yeah, it's it's the southwest map. So we're still in the southwest mm -hmm. map. So if you look at four on the southwest map, the southwest map basically from the Rockland Pocket as you go towards Fenmore, the village owns the land along the river there and the street. Um, there's quite a bit of space there. Uh, there's parking and what have you, but it could certainly be reconfigured. Then there's three buildings behind those buildings that is not village owned, but there's nothing back there. It's just blank wall. And so um, they could probably be persuaded to do a, an easement. Then there's another chunk of village land. You see the end of Ogden Street. Ogden Street is referenced in the LWRP as a site that should be a little pocket park. And so that's, there's a picture of it here. If you look at the Sheldrake River walkway, Picture one is a view looking across uh, from the from Fayette. Picture two is taken during the flood of a few months ago. And you'll see it's completely full of water. And, the, and all the trees, are, there's water up to their trunks. They don't care, they're fine. Water comes, they absorb the water, water goes down, they're good. Um, and the, the next two pictures is the end of Ogden, which I'm sorry to say is a mess. Um, it's super eroded, um, you know, there's, it's, it's not a good situation. There's a lot of parking, um, and even there's a village-owned lot behind Save a Tree. It's full of cars, it's full of a lot of stuff that really should not be there. But in any event, we need to recuperate that for the people, that we own it. Let's make it nice, right? And I think a little pocket park there would be great at the end of Ogden, with a couple of benches and so forth. Continuing along, um, again, mostly village land as you go up. Um, there's one another little lot there uh, behind one of the buildings. And then it's, you know, Blondie's Treehouse and all the rest of it that you're familiar with, village-owned land. There's some encroachment. Now, we get to the, the intersection in the corner of Fenimore. Um, and I didn't put this in my original, you know, uh, when we did our original walk because it seemed like too big of an ask. But that's the salt shed. Um, and so I would propose, so there's a diagram of the salt shed park. And I would propose that, and there's pictures on the back, that um, let's just say that's an inconsistent use. You know, that's not a good use. Now I understand it's the village pub needs that salt and it's hard to find a place to put it. But um, if you look at the pictures, that's a picture of it. It's pretty degraded along the, along the edge. And then it's mostly parking. Um, you can see picture number two on the right there, how the water flooded into the whole area. I took these on like around noon or so on um, the 29th of September. That's standing on the, the bridge over Fenimore, looking back at the salt shed. The whole place was full of water. And if you look at the third picture to the left there, um, you can see the water is right up against the salt shed and it's leaching salt into the river. And there was tons of other stuff there, gravel and, um, you know, all the car, truck, you know, pollution and so forth. And um, so, you know, we, we propose, um, and, you know, I look at that parking lot, by the way, if you look at the picture, it's not super, super heavily used. There's some trucks in it, but it's, I, I don't know who's actually parking there. It's, it's convenient, but, um, you know, I think the village needs that space. The water needs somewhere to go. So it's like, this guy wants to park his car. Okay. You know, how about I don't want to get flooded? You know, Let, let's put those things in the balance. So, um, so if you look at the design, this is just, you know, this is just sketchy stuff. Um, we would basically, you know, take about half the parking lot. We create a vegetated berm to, to keep all that salt and pollution out, out of the area, out of the river. We'd lower it. We'd put in a crosswalk so people can get across to Bub, Bub Walker Park. And the bottom line is the Sheldrake water needs a place to go. And I actually haven't measured the whole thing out, but we could quantify how much water would be stored there, would be held there, and would filter into the ground in that location, um, which would be significant. And uh, again, I've got a picture of a crosswalk 
And that is an incredibly dangerous place to cross. All of Fenimore is. And I would just like to say that when the Waverly Bridge goes and when Central Avenue goes, the pedestrian bridge, all the kids and people that live on that side of Washingtonville that go towards the high school and go towards wherever they go um, are gonna have no way through unless they go all the way around. So they're gonna be coming through and using Bub Walker Park. Okay, that is a transportation corridor for pedestrians and kids on bicycles. So you, you really need to put a decent crosswalk like the one in Rye with good, or like the one we've got up on Fenimore now. So I put that out there. Um, okay, I hope I'm going fast enough for everybody. Any questions so far? Keep plowing ahead. Okay, plowing ahead, plowing on. Okay, more, more pictures, next one. Uh, Plaza, so it's titled Plaza Walkway to Columbus Park. That corresponds to nine on your diagram. So I'm not saying anything about Bub Walker. Bub, Bub Walker exists. Um, you know, it's probably going to be messed with a little bit, you know, by the Army Corps or what have you, but it's there. But so we got to come through and we've got to get over to the Mason, that walkway along the Mason. Um, here's a picture of Plaza. Uh, again, on September 29th, it's completely flooded because, as you know, the Sheldrake is extremely narrow there. It has, the water has nowhere to go, so it goes on to Plaza. Um, I've heard some talk, I don't know if this is how solid this is, of turning Plaza into a one-way and widening and letting the river be wider. I think that's a really good idea because um, there aren't that many options of things to do. But, you know, we would certainly, you know, have our walkway continue there, whether it's on New Riverbank, on a widened river, whether it's on the sidewalk, what have you. Um, we come down now to into Columbus Park. So again, more flood pictures. Uh, the one on the right is view from Station Bridge at the confluence, looking towards Van Rance. And, you know, you, know you, you have different reactions to it. I said, all right, the Columbus Park is doing what it's supposed to do because it's floodplain of the Mamaroneck and Sheldrake rivers at the confluence. It's taking the water, it's absorbing the water. The problem is it's not enough. And that's why you see it flooding into Van Ranst. In the next picture, flooding into those, um, those buildings there. So, you know, again, you might want to take this into consideration. There is some open land around there, you know, that's some, you know, slated for development, slated for apartment buildings, slated for God knows what, um, you know, I think we need more green space and we need more places for flood water to go. Um, and on the bottom right, so this is a picture of this Sheldrake viewed from the footbridge in Mamarina in Columbus Park. And the invasive vines are like pretty pretty out of control, and um, they're they're hurting the mature trees. There there weren't native plants that were planted there. They're killing those, um, and um, and then also they are if you look, look at how much it's encroaching in the waterway. They impede the flow of water under the best of circumstances, and they also trap everything. They trap all the garbage, they trap the debris, they trap the logs. So it's a major issue. So um, as part of the Greenway proposal, there's going to be a maintenance piece to it. There has to be a plan in place, as we're putting a plan in place for Rockland, uh, whereby um, the, the, uh, the riverbanks themselves are going to be tended and the invasive vines and not weed and what have you is going to is going to be removed and kept under control. That's extremely important. Um, and it actually is an argument in favor of the Greenway. So this is Columbus Park. It's been a little neglected, but um, you know, but, but you'll see in a few other areas, you know, why this can be important. So this the next page is new park green infrastructure, Jefferson Avenue parking. So you all, everybody's seen this. We've talked a lot about it. Tony and I brought it to this board quite a while ago. It was brought to the Army Corps. The Army Corps has said they are they are down with this. This was, uh, and actually, interestingly <laughs> enough, the SLR report is it came like we said. Let's save all the parking because you you know we can't lose parking and found a way to keep the parking. The SLR report says lose the parking. 
make it park. It needs to be floodplain. So, you know, that's what the, the board can decide how they want to handle that, how much parking. But I said, okay. So I took out half the parking and I go down there pretty often and I count the cars. Okay. Because what else do I have to do with my free time? And, you know, <laughs> You know, it's like about half full. So if you got rid of half the parking, at least by what's happening now, you'd have enough space for it. And, you know, we've talked about this a lot already. So, but this is, you know, this is the confluence, this kind of the central piece of the whole thing. You're going to make new park and, um, uh, and you're going to handle a fair bit of flood water too. This is more or less, you know, anyway, leave that there. Um, and here's some on the next page, expanding Columbus Park, making green infrastructure. So we're on the central map, by the way, we, we skipped maps. We're now in the central map. Um, expanding Columbus Park and making green infrastructure. Um, here's a picture of a boy and his dad fishing right by the Jefferson Avenue Bridge. I think that's wonderful. In the right-hand side, that's the Jefferson Avenue parking lot as it looked half full recently. That's part. That is actually park. I mean, we're using it as parking lot, but it's part of Columbus Park. So, you know, let's make it park. And the last picture, paved parking. It's like this was taken again on during the flood. And so the whole park is flooded. People were flooded in Washingtonville. Um, you know, the apartment buildings are getting it in their in their in their garage, probably, right? They're on, on Van Rance, I'm gonna guess, right? Yep. And and here's the parking lot. Oh, yay, you know, it's sitting high and dry, this giant parking lot with a couple of cars in it. It's like, that's a waste. That's just dumb. That needs to go. That needs to be parked. I mean, you know, it could, in theory, if my calculations are correct, hold 2.6 million gallons of water. And that water is then going to go into the, percolate slowly back down into the groundwater and eventually end up in the river. But it's not going to flood. It's going to be held there. It's going to be stored there, and then it's going to recharge, um, recharge the river as it should because it's floodplain. That's what it is, and that's and the Army Corps recognizes that. Um, okay, moving along. Um, on the other side of the Jefferson Avenue Bridge, looking north. Um, now this gets a little trickier, but we want to have a greenway that has the whole thing. On either side of the river, there is village land. So if you look at the first picture, if you're looking up the Mamaroneck River on the right-hand side, there's a house there, but there's a chunk of village land that is completely covered with vine. So uh, my argument is that if there was a pathway there for people to walk on or a walkway, it would have easier access for maintenance and it would be maintained because there'd be people on it. And now it's just a wasteland that every piece of garbage that rolls down gets stuck in there and it stops the water. So that's the right-hand side. So if you look at 14 on the right, where it's pale green, central map, number 14, pale green on the right-hand side of the Mamaroneck uh, River, um, that is all village-owned land. It was kind of surprised me. Um, and it connects all the way up to Willow Street. So you could have a little walkway like the one I designed in my first picture that took you from Jefferson down along the river up to Willow, and you could, you know, you walk around Willow Street. Um, so the, what's happening on Willow right now is um, in the picture two in this Mamaroneck River walk to Willow on the right hand side, the upper right corner. This is village owned land um, next to the river, and it's basically there's just a lot of people parking there. I mean, why not? I park there too. Um, but there's plenty of parking on Willow Street. I don't know why they park there, but they do. And they don't really need to. So that's village owned land. That can be park. Um, behind that parking lot, where you see it's just a mountain of knotweed covered with vines, basically what the Rockland Pocket looked like when we started, um, that is village owned land up against the river that is not helping anybody, like David said. It's not absorbing properly. Um, if you put native plants in there that have much deeper root structures than these invasives, um, and so on and so forth. You know, you'd attract birds and all that. It would be lovely for people, but it could also be designed in such a way that it took some of the, sh of the flood water. And the last picture is a little further in, 
this is village land. Now, the whoever lives there has you know mowed it and you know, but that's fine. And you can see the Jefferson Bridge right there. There it is. So that's so I would I'm proposing that the walkway goes through on that side. Um, now next side, next um, next page. If you look at 14, 13 and 14, actually, 13 and 14 on the central map, uh, on which is the, basically the northwest side of the Mamaroneck River, um, there's a little bit of village land. It's pretty tight. I don't know if you could you know, use it, but it's along where Pecone Sausage is. They're parking, and then there's a little bit of land, whether you could get through there. Um, but it, what interests me, and we haven't approach them at all or anything, but I would like to, that would be something that we would have a further conversation about with the board and with the new mayor when you come on. Um, that is the, the um, it says in the, in the papers that it's owned by Amaranda Hess, whoever owns it, it's a gas station. And as you know, the whole back of that gas station, it's very, very densely vegetated. It's fenced off. There's a lot of trees there and it goes down to the river. And that could be, um, that would be a gorgeous bird sanctuary. It's, it's taking water now. It's holding water now. It could hold more if we, uh, if we were able to, you know, go in there and design we with a proper landscape architect and design it properly. But I don't know if, it, if it's developable at some stage, but, you know, it's a gorgeous little piece of property that I really think, uh, you know, is doing good work now. And we, you know, my vote is to find a way to um, do a conservation easement with those people and, and turn that into a, you know, Hess a bird uh, sanctuary. 14 continuing up, that's behind the North Shore Farms. Um, they, that again, so there's private land on that side, number 14 and number 15. There's a big parking lot there that's owned by a corporation that also owns some of the waterfront. Um, and, you know, my view, uh, what do I say about that? I say something here about it. Um, uh, anyway, I, I, I feel strongly that it's very worthwhile to, um, to try to find a way to um, make floodable park space out of that. Um, okay, so this is taking a long time. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, it's okay. But I seem to be missing a map. Oh no. Mm -hmm. I'm missing here. Oh well. Um, I don't know what happened. It's on the other side. No, it's not here. Um, so okay. The Nostrum Pocket Park, there's pictures. There's actually a site map that I was should have been in here, but we, we lost it. Oh, I don't have it. I don't know what happened to it, but that's all right. So there it is. It should be turned the other way. So you know, it has to get turned to the right. It's kind of upside down. But you know, there's not a whole ton of information here, but just so you know, um, actually it was Dan that said, hey, you know, we're finished with the Hillside Bridge, that's village land. I don't remember if you said that, Dan. If you remember saying that, Dan. You said that to Christy and I, and we went, okay, we're gonna go check it out. And um, you know, with Jerry's permission, we've done some planting there. Lou was part of that work crew, God bless you, Lou. And and Liam and Jen and Lindsay and Debbie and all these people doing some really hard labor, um, digging out a lot of knotweed along the bank. And then Lindsay got us a grant from DEC with a bunch of streamside plants that were designed for stabilization, pussy willow, Virginia roses, um, and a bunch of other stuff that we planted there. People donated stuff to us. Lindsay gave us a lot of ferns. Um, and then we got some village shrubs and up along the fence, which backs onto this corporate parking lot, which is very lightly used, by the way. Um, we put a butterfly garden in, we've got shrubs, we've got goldenrod, we've got a lot of seeds. So that's going to be a butterfly garden. So if you look at this picture, because I spend a lot of time now, but now I'm kind of finished with Rockland. Now I live over here in this neighborhood. Um, so there's, so I was out down there one day, I think it was in, um, probably in May. And, and these kids were like just fooling around in the water. They came running down through the through the little forest, you know, and their babysitter was after them and off they went and they were playing and having a great old time. And um, so, you know, this, this, is, this is life, this is wonderful. 
And so the second picture is after we did our work. I didn't, hmm. you can see in the first picture, there's vines and things in the picture. Second picture, you can see a little bit of the, um, the ferns, you know, these plants that we plant are tiny. Uh, but I've, I've been back and there, yeah, some of them don't make it, but a bunch of them have. These are the DEC plants that cost like 75 cents for one, for one shrub. And then here's the nostrum pocket, how it looks in the fall. And then again, I've noted these two parking lot site, sites that are adjacent that um, they're unbuilt. And uh, before they get built, um, I think, you know, it behooves us to see if we can come to some kind of an arrangement with um, the owners to do a conservation easement, even if it's for part of it. Um, so I'm, um, okay, let's see here. What did I miss? <laughs> if, you, if you could take oh, us home, Kate, please. I will, yeah. I will. So I'm almost, I'm almost there. So um, in the central map, wherever the central map is, uh, I've, I've lost track of it. I've lost track of my central map. Um, in the central map, if you look down to the right, you'll see spaces 18 and 19. 18 is Ward Park, which I gather we're going to lose some of it, maybe when the Army Corps puts that bridge in, you know, whatever they're going to do. But actually, the land continues on, village-owned land, all the way down to Tompkins. It's completely overgrown. It, it, there's sort of a pathway there. I don't think anybody uses it, but uh, we would we want to re reclaim that land and you know get all the vines and and, and rose bushes out of there and create a pathway that would that would need a staircase to get you up to Tompkins Bridge because it's down there. But it would for it makes a way for people to go through to enjoy the beautiful scenery. Now the great thing is we went out with our committee and on the other side of the bridge, north of the bridge. It's village owned land. It's they're not, there's nothing going on there. It's just a site. I think they mow it a little. Uh, people go in there and use it. There's a fair bit of garbage and you know beer cans back there. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a fabulous piece of land. Now there are some some pro some property owners um, that have land in there. And um, you know, so we'll have to see, but we we do know one of them who knows his neighbors, who used to be on our committee who asserted that they were interested in doing conservation easements. So there is a real good opportunity to turn that park area north of Ward into a proper park. And there's other little bits of pieces of village land that you could maybe put piece together, you know, if you were willing to turn the Anita Avenue bridge and put a pedestrian crossing um, on top of it, that would be a terrific amenity to pull things together. There's a lot more that could be do done there, but, that uh, piece of land on the north side of Ward Avenue Bridge um, is a fabulous site that needs to be recuperated. Okay, winding this up, um, on the north map, you will see the um, First Street Pocket Park. That So that is an existing kind of a park. Um, it, it, needs, it needs love. And, uh, you know, and so we, we would give it some love. Um, very tight in there to, to continue the walkway. There's little bits and pieces of land. We would, we would try to find a way to do that. Um, but then as you go up to, on the, so the first street park is on the south side of the Berry Avenue Bridge. On the north side, you've got your ambulance company with village owned land right there. And then you've got throughway land, county land, and village land on both sides of the river that takes you all the way up to the Harrison border. And then county land that continues into Harrison. So anyway, that's kind of a lot, isn't it? But so what's happening is that Long Island Sound Study, um, they have money. They have a grant opportunity that we are in the process of applying for. Um, it's basically 10 to 20 people for up to, a, or 10 to 20 entities. Our, this project is exactly what they're looking to do. Um, I won't you know, read you all their own goals, but it matches up very closely to their goals. They get money through the EPA. Um, so we're gonna look for that. And the idea is to, um, with your permission, to take that, let's say we get $100,000, 
to hire a landscape architecture company that, that does this, that does climate resilient green um, infrastructure to, to take my little plans and to, to, to do it properly so that we have executable plans that we can then get further money for to say, okay, let's hire you now with this other pot of money to build this, to make this happen. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're going. So that's 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 the ask. And that's why we we put you under some time pressure because the deadline for this first piece is um, December 15th. So we're working towards that already. And um, and like David said, there are, you know, like other pools of money, but step one is to take it to the next step to say the, the, the village supports this idea um, for all the reasons that we put out there, including the new people coming in and that we're going to take it forward. We're going to design it and then we're going to find, we're going to execute it and we're going to make it happen. Just like we made the rock and pocket happen. All right. Mayor, if I can, if Kate's finished. Yes, yeah. I am. <laughs> oh, finally. So She's so the, the Long Island Sound Resiliency Planning Support Program, um, they have, like Kate said, they have a million dollars. They'll do 10 to 20 awards. There's no match required. And by December 15th, we need to provide a letter of interest, obviously with what the work that Kate and the um, CFTE have done. We have more than a letter of interest. So we're going to, uh, we want to package up what Kate has plus a letter of interest either signed by you or signed by me. It doesn't really matter because there's no match required to be able to um, um, apply for a planning grant that would allow Cornell and UConn to give us a, a service provider, quote unquote, contractor to be able to move this project to the next phase. So that's really what the ask is. Yeah. And just so you know, I did meet with um, Taryn this morning, who is your grant and so we kind of went over it just to get a little bit ahead of it, assuming Good. you're going to say yes, of course. But, um, you know, what's going to be needed or the, the pieces that we, that she and I need to pull together. And that's an important one. Is, is everybody on the board uh, okay with the concept of uh, asking? Absolutely. Yes. Writer? There's, there's yes. nothing not to, yes. not to like. Yes. Yes. Just one other item here. There's an item on <clears throat> tonight's regular meeting agenda. Uh, one of the outgoes of a comprehensive plan or hazard mitigation plan was that open act, open space acquisition acquisition study for the Shell Drake River. And one of the items to move this. Yeah, one of the items is to uh, move ahead with that type of study because we got okay. a grant for that. Couple just ago. moving ahead. We don't need a resolution for this. We could just give a, a consensus here. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no there's no money out of our pocket. Okay. So I think you have a you you, you have a the blessing. Okay. Yes. And, and and for purposes of the letter of interest, I don't need a vote from the board. Okay, like a, yeah, I, I just, that's my question. I have no idea. I, we can no, I, I looked for I looked for the resolution requirement, and it may be for the next phase, but for this phase, which they call track one, it doesn't look like they're asking for a resolution at this point. They just want a letter of interest, and of course, we're going to wow them with all the stuff that Kate has already. So I think we'll be in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and if worse comes to worse, we have a meeting in two weeks. If there has to be a letter, there's a meeting okay. in two weeks. And, you know, and I'm going to be speaking to Taryn in like a week. Okay, we got to find out if she needs Thank that. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Go get a drink of water. Thank you. Uh, okay, you know what? There's, there was staff on tonight because they have issues that uh, are on the agenda. And then we have a presentation by Mr. DeAngelis about a new village hall. So I'm going to get the staff next. Uh, and Gino has the dam. All right, we're going to do Jeff on. Uh, Jeff, you're here for the ride on mower? Yes, Mayor. Okay, would you like to elaborate on it? Uh, two weeks ago at the work session, I brought to the board uh, an electric ride-on mower with a trailer. Uh, I was requested to bring a gas-powered ride-on mower to this meeting so we could discuss the differences between both and the price differences. Okay. Okay. And and the, the, the price differences stark? No. Uh, it's about uh, the electric ride-on mower with the trailer's 
comes in at uh, around forty six thousand dollars, and the gas powered ride on mower that we currently use now it comes in at um, thirty three five seven eight sixteen. So it's about a thirteen thousand dollar difference. We're replacing a mower mayor that we've already dumped into about, I think, what was it, Jeff? Fifteen thousand. Uh, just looking at this year's budget, we dumped about fifteen thousand dollars into our current ride-on mower to keep it going. Um, I did a little research today. The last time the Parks Department purchased the same type of mower was back in two thousand three. So it's 20 years old and we poured in half of what a new mower would cost, um, similar replacement. Yeah, so the question really is for the board, would, would you want to go with the electric mower or do you want to go with the uh, gasoline mower? Correct. The, um, the, the price difference didn't, uh, isn't that stark. And I'm wondering if we're being penny wise and pound foolish. Um, uh, that's, that's all. Okay. Just, just, just my opinion is, yeah, we, We've had the same mower for 20 years. We, we know we know what it does. We know how long it lasts. Um, the electric world is kind of new to commercial and governmental use, mm -hmm. especially on areas as big as we have. Um, it's either we take a shot at it and see how it goes, or we go with what we know works. That's true. If you, if you buy it, if you buy it, it's a flop. All right, I would I would defer to uh, your ju your judgment on this. <laughs> my my judgment would be that um, you know we we cut 144 acres a week. Mm -hmm. well, we know what our current diesel mowers could handle. I do not know what an electric mower could handle. All mm -hmm. right. Okay, that, that, I think okay. I, that says it all. All right. So there's a there's a few other municipalities around us who use electric mowers, but they have the luxury of having garages in those parks. We have one central garage, and all of our parks are based around the outside of that garage. So the the, the gas mower you you drive to the parks. Am I correct? The gas mm -hmm. mowers we drive directly to the parks. We don't trailer them. We don't use a uh, pickup truck to bring them. We, we get on them, we put the safety bars on, we put our seatbelts on, and, and we drive them to each park. Okay. Um, you can't do that with an electric. You have to trailer it. You have to, you know. If we do that with the electric, first of all, it only does 13 miles an hour. Sec second of all, if we drive it park to park, when we had the um, Gravely rep come down to us, <clears throat> if we drive it, to the parks every day we lose two hours worth of cutting time wow. per per day so we already we already have to buy a second set of batteries because we only get six hours of cutting to begin with and then if we drive them we're cutting that down to four hours so we would have to switch batteries out at lunchtime and then bring them back and, and, and the drive to the park will use up half your battery. It, it yeah. cuts two hours. Each day it would be cut down two okay. hours with the amount of driving we do. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, I, I guess it, it's it's more practical to, to go with the gasoline. What, what, what does the rest of you think? Um, well, I, I mean, it, it's not, it, we don't have to do this immediately, do we? Mm -hmm. No. No. He, need, no, he needs the mower. No, he needs the mower. He, he needs the mower. What's okay. the lead time, Jeff? Do you remember? That's Say that again, Jerry. What's the lead time on the mower? So when I just got the updated quote uh, two weeks ago, uh, someone just placed an order that day, and it's due in in April. Yeah. So. So they ordered it. Uh, I think that was uh, November fifteenth, and it's not due in until April two thousand twenty-four. My, my only concern is that the, two weeks ago we had a lot of folks here who were concerned about just the money. And 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 we didn't hear from folks who who might be more passionate about the environmental part of it. So so I I uh, I, I feel like we got one side of the uh, one side of the the public input. We haven't we haven't heard it, and so we might want to get a little bit more public input on it. We also 
It's well, both. we also in, I know, I know, but you you weren't here two weeks ago. Yeah. It was like it was, you, you would have thought it was a, a toxic waste dump. Yeah. We also indicated two weeks ago at the regular meeting that we would be discussing both options at our regular meeting. I mean, that's so we are discussing. Yeah, I, both I, 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 uh, no, we said at the regular meeting we do it at the regular meeting. So I think why would so, you do this at the regular meeting? This is something that gets done because the work session. Because we because last two weeks ago we had quite a long conversation. Many, many people spoke about the cost of the mower. We asked Jeff to come back with another quote, and we said that we were going to discuss it at the regular meeting. <coughs> people could have the opportunity to weigh in. It, it, it wouldn't hurt. I mean, it's, it's not going to hurt to, 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 get, to let people just weigh in. They can weigh in on any item. They, I, they, they, they already have that. Availability and possibility. It's not our only mower, but Mayor, it's not in, in, in board. It's not our only mower. There will be an opportunity in the future to discuss more in depth the electric. And I, yes, I think. What, what, well, just let, I, let me finish, please. What, what, what I'm saying is, the board should come to a consensus on what we think is best for the community. Present that tonight, and if, if people feel contrary, they can get up and have their three minutes of say. Uh, but, but you know. Okay. We we have we have our uh, head of DPW telling you that this would be the best move, and I don't know. I just I, 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 so I, 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 not everything is a debate. That's you know. I know. I get it. I get it. I think that a lot of people were didn't didn't understand how you know didn't the, the cost seemed very very expensive. I think a thirty three thousand dollar lawnmower seems pretty expensive too. So I think that people were reacting to the cost, and then there was a conversation about whether it was more it was you know it's environmentally sound to use electric. It may not be practical with our parks. There was a lot of thoughtful conversation. I, just, I imagine some people will be back tonight because they thought from the last meeting they'd be able to weigh in, and they will. And they can weigh yeah. in, but it, it it shouldn't be an open issue amongst us. You're not knowing what direction the board was going to go during work session. We have two resolutions on mm -hmm. tonight's meeting. Okay. Each option. All right. right. One, 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 one. Good. So, Jeff, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you. Village employee, uh, with Jason Pinto. Are uh, you here for rec fees and gas powered utility vehicles? Hello. G good evening, Mayor and Board. Um, so we'll just do the fee schedule first. Um, uh, so we uh, met with the uh, village manager a few months back uh, to come up with a, a planning for our budget, our revenues, and the fee schedule. Um, we've uh, generally, it's a 5% increase for residents, 10% increase for non-residents in the fee schedule. Uh, the fee schedule went to the Parks and Recreation Commission at our November meeting, and they voted uh, unanimously to send it to the Board of Trustees. Uh, so that fee schedule is in front of you now uh, for consideration uh, uh, at a regular meeting. Um, if anyone has any questions about an item, uh, feel free to ask. Um, but generally, it's a 5% incre increase for residents and 10% for non-residents. Are there any questions for Jason about the fee schedule? I don't know. Oh, I did, and I'm trying to find it. I'm, I yeah, apologize. One, one second, I had to He was out of order. Jeff. No, hey. it's not messing with the tablet, and that's what happens when we yeah. go out of. Um, Jason, Jason, how yes. often do we? Um, how often do people uh, utilize the? Um, the the pavilion space inside it, or outside the outside i didn't even know that the people can rent inside but the outside the well the the deck the, the deck to the yes building. yeah or that, just give uh, me both sorry the, the eject adjacent to the building is booked every weekend generally friday saturdays and sundays usually multiple weekdays like two on saturday two on sunday um and that deck holds about 50 people and during the 102 day season, it's regularly booked as well as the camp Monday through Friday uses it for seven hours um, as well. Um, inside, uh, we're a little bit less limited because we have keeps on one side and then the other side is programmed for rec programs, uh, Zumba, you know, um, fitness programs, Southeast Consortium, special needs programs. So the uh, 
that side of the building is kind of booked, but we do do some people want to do birthday parties in there in the winter and we will we do book it uh, for them, but less so than what we do on the in the summertime on, on the outside. And do we um, do we pay or do we um, not pay, but do we charge for the deck um, on the beach too? Yeah. Uh, you mean the little one, like where yeah. the tree is? And sometimes if people so, want to go on Yeah, that. so so it's kind of hard to do two parties there at once because you're so close to the other group. And but what we do is we create a party package where they have the deck, they can use that little adjacent area for extra space, and then they can also use the the beach facilities, the spray ground, the beach swimming, and all and the sand. So it's kind of like both those decks are kind of like one when we rent them out because you can't do two parties at the same time. Uh, it's just they're just on top of each other. All right, thank you, Nelson. You're welcome. And uh, talk about your gas powered utility vehicle. Wait, I I have a couple of questions. Okay, sure. go ahead. Um, page one uh, at the bottom. Uh, there's there's Harbor Island Park, Lands of Field, Bandstand, resident and non-resident. So Correct. the current is seventy dollars an hour. Um, and the new is going to be twelve hundred dollars. So I assume that nobody rents it for one hour. There's, but that's so, a big. Yeah. So that is based off if the board approved a new bandstand. Um, okay. I think the last meeting. That's yep. a fee based off what we would charge for the new one. The okay. old one is also in there because we want to have both. Because I can't charge a fee that's not approved. So if we if that other bandstand is not built by this summer, I still have yep. to use the old bandstand. I need a fee for that. So. So that's why, yeah. The other and, bandstand is a hundred person bandstand. So that's why that fee is so much higher because you could fit a hundred people under there. And um, you won't be charged, but well, the, but it's going to be a different structure. Okay. Yeah. Different structure, but I need to have both in there because I, I don't know if I'm going to have the new one by the time the rental season starts or not have it. So, so I need to have options. So, Okay, it just that it, that that isn't clear. So it's a non-resident is seventy dollars an hour, and for resident is currently twelve hundred, but it will be fifteen hundred. Well, I have Lanza Lanza Field Bandstand current, and then Lanza Field Bandstand new. There's two two line items there. Two one new, is, but there's yeah. Two so one is the old bandstand at seventy dollars per hour, and then if we end up building the new one for the non-resident, it would be fifteen hundred. Okay. Okay. So based off the little bandstand that we currently have, which fits, I don't know, we mostly rent it for like school shows, like plays and things like that, um, which we would charge like a, like an artistry, for example, rents mm -hmm. it. They get, they pay $45 an hour now for that little band shell. Um, so, but if that, right. But if that's not, but if we're going to build a hundred person bandstand there, um, I need a fee for that. And that was, these fees were done through research and what other people charge for a hundred person rental Jason, area? Jason, I, I think what Nora's saying is that because there's no there's two there's two Harbor Island Park Lanza Field Bandstand resident new, one's twelve hundred, and then the same thing for fifteen hundred. I think it's probably non resident for fifteen hundred, yes. and I think it's for a four hour period. That I that's what I think is not clear. Oh, correct. So it would be the resident would be twelve hundred, four hour minimum. And then the non-resident would be fifteen hundred for for four hour minimum. I, right. I'm confused if that wasn't clear on the sheet, but yes, that's accurate. Um, so that so that probably so, clarified on the sheet. That's why I assumed. But good question. Yeah. So we do our we do our outdoor facility, you know, decks or or in this case bandstand, we do them for four hour minimums. Okay. And so the extra hour is always after four hundred. It's after four hours, and then yeah, one after, last. All right, and then one last one, Harbor Island, it's the next page, pavilion deck rental off season. So is, is the season, the beach season, like Memorial yeah, Day? Yeah, Memorial Day, Friday before Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, yeah. We okay. were, I we as a staff were having a difficult time renting it in September and October for that price. So mm -hmm. we, a couple of years back, we reduced it and we've had a lot more success getting it in yep. like those 60 degree days. So yep. okay. all right. Thank you. Okay, that was all. Thanks. Anybody else have questions for Mr. Pinto on the fees? No. 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 All right. Uh, please talk about the other item. The the uh, ride on uh, the gas uh, power. So last meeting, we had the electric version on. Uh, Dan asked that we put the gas on so we can compare. Um, so just to be simply and quick, 
the price difference the electric one was 25 7 10 80 the gas version is 20,956.87 so it's about a $5,000 difference between a gas version of the machine versus the electric version of the same machine the gas version is uh, I know trustee Yeiser Reed asked me a question about multi purpose uses the gas version would be able to be used in snow versus the electric version not as good to be used in snow i.e. put a salter on it or whatever whatever we need to do at that time so uh, we brought it back with the gas price um, which would be a little bit more um, multi purpose or multi use um, so that's for the board to consider. Both options are, are in front of you. And obviously we go around the village with our gas powered UTVs to do all the sidewalks, the 24 hour sites and all of the locations that we have uh, that the parks department takes care of that the DPW does not have to take care of. No question. Okay. So I'm, I'm hearing that, that you prefer the gas? Or because not? it's dual purpose. The yeah. gas is for the village. So for the recreation department, I would prefer the electric. Everything I do on the beach is electric, but for the village, for a multi-department use, the gas is better. For example, every parade we do, the fire department buy, borrows the golf cart or whoever, um, this would be a better for them versus the electric. Um, same with parks department, salter versus no salter. So more departments would be able to use it versus mostly just the recreation department use on the electric version. So with, with the gas version, you can salt? Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yes, yes. So I called the rep and um, I, because that, I know trustee you guys are read, asked, asked that specific question, the gas, you would be able to put a salter on it um, because it it's 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 got more power to get through the snow and they don't re recommend that on the electric uh, model. Okay, how, how long would it take to get this? Uh, this this particular product, uh, eight to 12 months from date we provide a purchase order. Yeah, these things take a long time. Uh, I know the Parks Department just received a piece of equipment. I think it was 18 months. They ordered it during COVID or something. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it nothing comes quick. And that's for both the gas and or, and or electric? The, yeah, the electric's actually a little bit longer. Electric's more towards the 12 months where the gas is more towards the eight months. Mm -hmm. right. And this is replacing something that's how old? This no, is this is augmenting. Easy. This is new. It's new. This is new. We would be adding a service vehicle to the beach during the summer and then use that service vehicle to augment the um, the Park. snow detail for the parks department in the winter. And where do we store it? We have a uh, garage that we're going to put it in we have multiple garages so we'll we'll okay. figure it out all right um but yeah it's listen it's up to the board for, to consider um like i said at the last meeting we make do would this be a lot easier for my staff my tart time people 100 percent um would this not destroy the golf cart that we're supposed to be using for transportation 100 percent um but you know we'll make whatever we have to do work Thank you. What do you folks think? I, I, well, I, I think um, I defer to his, uh, his wishes. I'll, we'll get it. Okay. Everybody fine with that? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Jason Pinto. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just real quick, if you don't mind, thank you for being such a good friend to the Recreation Department and your service to our community. I personally really appreciate uh, your leadership towards my department. So thank you. Thanks, Jason. It's a pleasure working with you and your department. God bless you. I'll see you around. Uh, the next up is uh, Jeff LaRussa. Jeff, uh, did you want to talk about harbor fees? Good evening. Yes, uh, you should have in front of you the harbor fees uh, for 2024 season. I suggest about a 2% increase for docks. And uh, also, the moorings have not been raised since 2020. So if we raise those a dollar a foot, it's about a 7% increase, you know, rounded. All these I had to round a little bit to make them even so it's easier for us when we're processing the applications, we're not dealing with change and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So, um, and it was about, it was about four years ago that we had a, a significant adjustment 
to our fees three, four years ago, right, Jeff? Yeah, it was about four years ago, yeah. So the 2% is pretty consistent with, you know, CIP and all of that. Right. We organized the fee schedule last year to make it more understandable for both the staff and the public. Jeff, and was there, was there a leakage from the uh, increase in fees last year, or do we have a, a, a full... Uh, Problem. No, we're, we're, we're about the same uh, occupancy wise. M my biggest thing that holds us back from filling up more is not being able to put bigger than 22 foot boats on the, on the main docks, only on S dock. So once the dock build is over this winter, most of the docks will all be, re you know, finished. I can then concentrate on putting fingers and then I'll come to the board at that point to uh, increase the size of the boats on the docks. And then I think that will get us, you know, a, a lot more occupancy when I could put like a 24 foot boat on the dock, say, or something like that. Nobody buys small boats anymore. Everything is bigger. You know, we get calls all the time for, you know, 25, 26 foot boat, but I, I can't put those on the dock. The docks aren't set up for that. And it's in our code that they can only be up to 22 feet. Gotcha. Okay, thank you for that answer. Anybody yeah. have any questions for our friend, Mr. Larusa? Yeah. But it's fine with what he's proposing. Yeah. Jeff, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. Uh, the next up, I'm sure, is going to be a rather lengthy. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, Mr. DeAngelis, our friend, uh, has a proposal for a new village hall. Uh, then we're going to do, if we have time, we'll do Gino. Uh, with the Westchester Waterworks Dam, as I know that's going to be time consuming. And then we have stuff that we have to get done for the regular meeting. So just set yourself up and begin. I just have to make a quick break. Do I need water right now? I don't know. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, let me come and grab it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm Greg D'Angelo, so architect with me is Brian Burke, senior architect for my firm. Um, I'm not sure how many, I, I don't know if you all, I don't think all of you were, yeah, I don't recall if all of you were here in December, last December when we presented. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. So what I want to do is quickly go through, but I'll go through it quicker now that I don't have to be, do too much of it. But just a, a kind of, Set up an agenda. Um, initially, so I just want to do a brief history of where we are. Um, you know, what what were the primary goals for the space planning study and, and the new village hall? Um, kind of three big pieces to it. One is improve the police and court facilities. Um, they're they're undersized. There's space layouts and security and safety um, concerns about them. So this is a big objective for this project. Uh, providing some flexible space for emergency shelter, emergency use, also for community use too, in you know, different types of meetings and, and things, events might happen. Uh, and it also provides an opportunity to, to consolidate the village offices, bring it back from the regatta, back to this site, have them all in one place. It's more efficient for village registration, communications back and forth, in person meetings. Uh, we still have some of those, right? Um, and, um, uh, and, and also more convenient for the public, to have one place to go. So, and then this becomes the village civic center. This whole concept that's been discussed between 
the fire department, Emily Theater, or American Legion. Um, so I'll go through that planning study briefly just to kind of give remind you of the, of the overall layout. And then what the board asked us to do afterward was go into a schematic design, which is a, a more detailed level of analysis, uh, testing the floor plan layouts for the different departments, as well as adding engineers to the team. So we, we brought on a site engineer, landscape architect and planning uh, parking and traffic consultant. Uh, we brought on a structural engineer and we brought on a mechanical electrical plumbing and fire protection engineer to select out the requirements so that the cost estimator can update the cost estimate and see where we're at. Um, so we've had additional program meetings with courts and police as well as the village administration. Um, we've been through the existing building site with the team, the, the engineering team, got them oriented to the project and, and had to several discussions with them, looking at alternatives, ways of doing some different things. So we've now called that into a schematic design set. What I'm going to present tonight, what we're going to present tonight, is really just parts of that. There's there's um, several drawings and many many pages of, of some narratives and outline specifications, as well as a backup for a cost estimate. Um, so with that, I understand that we don't have to really get into deck stuff at this point. So if you all remember, this was the initial um, planning study. And I'll see if my uh, laser works here without getting in any trouble here. Um, you know, this is the original building that we have and the basic concept was to add on the police facility expand it onto the left side our left of the building uh and then the purple is the courts and and the tan color is really the offices administrate village office administration up on the second level uh and then on the third level would be building and planning uh and then the the reddish color is really space that's some of that flexible resiliency emergency use shelter space um, and we have a few views of that, Dan, if you want to kind of flip through. And then the other big piece of this was by pulling out, taking away the parking lot that the police need now in front of the building, we have the opportunity to create this kind of central village green. Uh, and then to the left of it, towards the library, is the poetry garden can remain and be enhanced as, as deemed necessary. And then we have the war memorials and kind of the memorial park across from American Legion. So there's we thought that was a really nice sequence of, of spaces and just open green space in front of the building. Um, go ahead, yeah. And then, you know, working around the building, Johnson Avenue stays as it is, you know, a little bit of regrading primarily it provides the opportunity to get parking underneath the building. Uh, in the planning study, we had one level of parking for under the village offices and a level of parking under for the police department. Um, and you can still see some of the old building, existing building, Standing up there, and, and with the approach was, you know, that is part of the history of America. This this building, and then there is some sustainability and value in its additional its existing infrastructure. Uh, there will be a lot of improvements. We put a new elevator in there, but that's a you know a centerpiece. It also allows for some phasing, you know, different ways of phasing the project from the structure. Next stands. Thank you. Uh, and then just another view from the library lane side. Uh, where the police kind of their their whole wing here, and, and how the the other uh, some of the volume step down, so you can see some of the building from from the back side as well. Uh, and this becomes more of a service car to Johnson Street. All right, so let's uh, and then quickly just to show you floor plans. This is the, the overall site plan. Prospect Avenue at the bottom of the page, Library Lane on on the left side, uh, Johnson Street beyond uh, or above on the page, and then and Mount Pleasant. Um, the, the wing with the courts and the um, and the village offices on the right hand side, and, and then the police station and facilities on, on the left. Um, going next to it. Kind of, we, we did a few yeah, floor plans again, lower level garages, if, you know, basement stuff, utility storage mm. stuff. Next, um, uh, and then the first level, this is where we started fleshing out. And, and allocating space for the police department on the first floor. We have putting a covered arcade in front of the existing building, which is roughly here, um, where the red is. And then and a, and a separate entrance on the right where the, would be the main public entrance for the courts, for the village office, for building and planning, uh, kind of an open area for, you know, it's kind of a lobby, uh, it's a courtroom, we've reoriented that now. Uh, and the basically our first level is all court facilities and upstairs. 
is is if you know the next one down. Thank you. Uh, the village office is up here around the uh, taller space for the courtroom. Uh, the new elevator that comes in. We're adding two elevators to the building. One really dedicated to police department units. Um, on, on in the blue, and then the other is inside the building. We've located this in a spot where we can get the overrun for the elevator and stay with underneath the roof lines of the existing building. Um, so that that and it, and it works out fairly well. We have kind of public lobbies on each overhead on each on each floor. Right. Go ahead. Uh, hey, hey Greg. Yeah. Hey Greg. Can you go back to SK SK four? I want to make sure that the secure hallway is included. Yes. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So what we started, you know, looking at for this, um, uh, uh, one of the critical components with municipal buildings and facilities and courts and, and, and police is the separation of different uh, circulation paths. So what we integrate in here is, is a back hallway, uh, which is primarily allows for the police to bring up, you know, detainees and then bring up from the parking garage where there's now a sally port, can be a sally port. Uh, an elevator brings them up into a se separate area where they are, and it also escort them to the courts, to the courtroom, without crossing through public or other municipal walkways. Right now, they kind of stick to the police, mm -hmm. you know, the police department here now. Um, so that's very important. And also, as we went and had additional conversations with, with the court staff, the court administration, mm -hmm. they also realized that they need to wheel down some of their court records down to court facilities, or sometimes the judges don't want to really have to cross paths with, with public. So this gives them an option to park in the police side of the building, use that elevator, and have a back way into the courts. Uh, Thank and we you. Can that further Thank you. Can I, can I ask you a question? So while you're on that page, there's the courtroom. Yes. How like how big is that in comparison with this room? It's essentially the same size. Okay. Uh, and we'll get into more detail. Okay. On that. I'm, I'm really I'm trying to go somewhat fast to get through the. The basic concept, like I said, if we don't work out in detail, that's what Davis and I design. I think there's one more. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Top floor. Let's do a top floor. And that's a building plane. That's all within the footprint of the existing building. We have to put a, a new second stair on, on, on this back corner, uh, a new stair here, similar to where the, the one is now, but it's a new stair for the elevator. Um, and then I think now we move on to. What we stand for schematic design. So this is the cover is like I said, it's a very thick report. We're not going to go through page by page. The next one gives a rendering, a more realistic rendering of the building as the design has been developed. Um, so you see the big village green in the center of Prospect Avenue, sidewalk here in front, and the bottom. Uh, walkways, separate walkways for That's police nice. yeah. and to the and to the uh, court door to the administration entry. But linked by the, the um, by the arcade too, which does a few things. It serves as a place to um, uh, you know for lines if there's queuing, covered access. You know, to be used also setting up different types of events. Right. To the left would be the poetry garden. To the right would be the, um, the memorial uh, wing. Um, and also, you know, just reminding my coming here tonight is these these now have been graded so that they're it's one long walkway. It doesn't we don't need steps or separate ramps. So, which is very nice, just easy. Yeah. You know, there's a retaining wall on the sides, but you know that that separates and provides makes some space for the poetry garden. And just quickly, in terms of the design, you know, we, we, from early on, we kind of want to re, kind of re, relate to the existing building, even though we're not replicating it. And and we mm -hmm. do that in a couple ways by kind of respecting the height of the second floor cornice that you see in the building. And then also another thing we work mm -hmm. with is the the spacing of these bays. Uh, on, on the existing building we've got, which are a little shadow in here, but they're, they're big arch windows and tunnel windows above. And we've kind of repeat that pattern as we go across the building. So there, there's some acknowledgement of the building and kind of working with it. And, and these, this pattern works well with the, with the spaces above. So we'll keep going. Uh, this is now just kind of going around, getting a couple different views, kind of a view, bird's eye view of, of the courtroom, village administration side. The, the curved uh, arcade, a little curving to it to help make something more of this space. There's a lot of landscape plan, we'll show that in a minute. Keep, keep going. Yeah, thank you. This is the backside now. So, this is pretty much the same. This is just left out with the water in terms of brick. Nothing is definitive in terms of the color of the brick. It's still early phases, but some kind of brick that is maybe not identical to the existing building, but complementary. And, and that would be a discussion during the next phases of design. Uh, this is kind of more service happening back here where there's 
you know, trash refuse pickup, loading and unloading, um, and, and the ways out for, for people that can pull the police would probably still park primarily around along with Johnson, but some village staff could be there. I forgot, we're also expanding the park on Mount Pleasant, park, the parking lot on Mount Pleasant, off Mount Pleasant, could be gated, so that's more private just for staff. Uh, between that parking lot and the garage, with our parking study, it should be adequate for the port and um, village staff and building department plan. We've also, after having several discussions with the police department, are showing a new, and I'll show this plan more, but you see, you see a little peek there, a new two-level parking uh, deck, similar to the Hunter Pier, similar configuration, uh, down where the library lane lot is now. Uh, let's keep, keep going. Uh, I guess this is, uh, you know, going in again here. <laughs> Parking deck is we are putting solar panels and there's a lot of things like solar panels on the solar parking deck as well as on the roof lines and the green space. Uh, what we did also do is after further discussion with the police, they really need more parking and, and they have a, a you know kind of a crunch period between the end of the daytime shift and the beginning of the e afternoon and evening shift where we've got two sets of personal vehicles and all the squad cars basically yeah. at site at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they, they, this gives them an extra little more, some more flexibility, uh, this extra level of garage um, space here. Uh, okay, yeah. um, this something we focus. So this is one of the drawings from the site, civil engineer, GPS property. Um, in this case, prospect is up on the top here, the hunter tier deck is, is across the street at the top, uh, Mount Pleasant. This is Johnson Street and Library Lane on the right. Um, you can see the three kind of zones of, of um, you know, green space starting to suggest a general plan for, for landscaping around uh, the expansion of the lot off Mount Pleasant. This would be the lot off of Library Lane. At the ground level, you could come off the Library Lane right on grade into the lot. And then using the grade of Johnson Street, the grade is up, get to the upper level without any, so we don't lose space on the start on the parking deck for, for ramps, it's it's all incorporated there. Um, hey, Grace, yes, sir. It, it, that library lane, what we call the Johnson lot, it looks like you're adding like spots. 14 or 16 spots. Uh, we're adding 29 on the bottom, it's 30, 29, and 33. So, okay. Yeah, now is what is that, 16 or so? I think is that for public use as well? Well, so the lower level could be for public use or permit use. Yep, um, yep. And then the upper level probably be needed for all for the police, but it would give some extra parking. You know, it's, it's lower down in grade, but for the, the commercial or residential in here. Um, also, by this configuration, we're actually adding some green space between the parking area and the um, and the side of the Washington Hill housing uh, okay. building. So, uh, and then some screening along, along the lot. Okay. Um, so now we, the next is, yeah, it's just some more detailed plans. Quickly, this is the lowest level of the garage parking, showing where the Sally Port is, showing the, the uh, um, parking garage and, and some of the space that's there that the police can use. Next. Uh, this is the second level of the police safety garage, all the basement facility, extra storage space, so we can get out of 650 Lamarty Avenue storage spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, and then and then this is municipal uh, or, or for you know village administration parking here. Um, I won't get into more nothing about that, that's enough. And then so the first floor, uh, the first floor shows where the you know the two entrances are on the left hand side for the police station with a you know control command center lobby. Um, as well as you know, other facilities, expanding locker rooms. Uh, one of the village objectives is get to thirty percent by twenty thirty of a woman uh, personnel. So that that expands the locker room. It accommodates that. Um, some of the places that people need to meet with police departments yeah. first: uh, muster room, uh, you know, gym, whatever. On this lower level, and then an area for detainees, which is kind of sectioned off from elsewhere, with access to that. Um, uh, what you call it, to, to the, uh, the service, service part, right. Um, on, the, on the right hand side is baseball court administration. We have, have had several meetings with them and they would be more moving forward. But basically along the side of the building, we re reoriented the courtroom. So it, it's going, it's actually in the same direction we are now. But the entrance would be in the back of the room, which, which allows the same amount of space, more, more seating in, in, in the space. 
We show two different layouts, one of which meets OCA regulations, Office of Court Administration regulations mm -hmm. for uh, courtroom use, and then up above, the more typical for, you know, village board meetings, land use board meetings, and, and, and such. Hey, Greg, um, Greg yes. you, I, you've met with us like two or three times in detail. How have you met with the judges and have you met, have they talked to you about um, what they're looking for as far as the, the new layout? Yeah, we've met with them at least three times since the planning study. Okay. And okay, yes, sure. in detail. And they, they actually have some more comments, you know, based on what we did last. But but what we have done is is we created, the, the trick here is, is the challenge was to have mm -hmm. a window that's easily accessible for the public, mm -hmm. um, keeping them be able to lock off their area, but also, um, getting access to the back of the courtroom, um, having this secure partner that the judges could use to coordinate with the police so that they, they can come go without having to worry about their, you know, uh, problematic interactions with, with people. Um, and, and then they can shut that down at night. So they, they have, when, when this boardroom is in use by other people, there's no access into the court area, mm -hmm. but there's still access to the back where there's a jury room, break room, Executive section room, things where you know other boards want to use it. Uh, have a foil in the back there as well. Once there's also a courtroom in the uh, excuse me, a office room in the front corner, which could be used sometimes. The prosecutor needs to meet with with uh, detainees, right. but also um, it could be used in a variety of ways, just with a reservation type system. You know, the the prosecutor, the prosecutor, he or she um, meets in the in the hallway now. It's just it's just got off it so which is one of the right one of the comments that have come across and then it's this area where in the existing building is, is where space that you know we have a warming kitchen we have an area for showers and bathrooms uh and then these could be configured into some kind of temporary shelter if needed or also other times by members of the community for different types of committee meetings or, or whatever um this is the two stories that back here it's actual actual seating area so if there is an overflow in the courtroom or, or a board meeting or a land use meeting, you know, they could be set up in a remote TV too. So more people could be present if they wanted to. Um, and and be able to excuse me. And and also exhibit space. I mean, there's some opportunities for artwork from the community and things like that. So um, is this two rooms, this room? community room? Is this two separate rooms or is it one large room? Or is this the space here? Yeah, the community. No, the community room space. Well, is it, it two? It would be subdivided. We would do some temporary the Temporary partition. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it could be a couple, three different spaces or one or two. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So the courtroom, this room holds 96 and this it says there's 48 seats. 48 with the courtroom. Now, so two things. Um, this is set up very rigidly with the, or very closely aligned with the Office of Court Administration mm -hmm. regulations. I know I have seen that sometimes our court does it a little bit differently and it doesn't need as much space, but, but we want to show I, that this- I've also been here where literally there wasn't room to stand in this courtroom. During, during court, court. yeah. Well, that's part of the reason to have this extra space on the outside. Not everybody, you know, there may have to be some management of that. Um, and but it gets in a place where people can be standing inside and or and you know not. I mean, I mean, they will, I mean, that's the difference between the number of seats he can fit and then the number of people who can be in here based on the physical size of the room. But right. the, so the courtroom tables wouldn't be stationary. So if there was a big because public forty eight isn't really enough for a public hearing here. I mean, there we right. may have meetings where there might be more than forty eight people. Yeah, well, so village the meetings. Upper plan is to play that more like the way we are using it now. Mm -hmm. Um, and and this is about the same because we get six seats across and we mm -hmm. have one, two, three, four, five rows. So um, so it's a seat to lay out like that. Now and that's about what we have here now. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean there's like a standing room or other times, but but having a door in the back of the room allows for some more really some more room and maybe a row of chairs left out in the back. Um, we, we, can, we can look at it what the rating is in terms of square feet per person and exits. We, we have we have plenty of exits. So. Yeah, and the one thing about the seats is that um, in a court, the seats for the audience have to be secure to the ground. Yeah. Because you could have an irate person pick up the seat and express his displeasure with the judge. Or supposed to be anywhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's 
or maybe not to the ground, but to each other. So that they yeah, they're supposed to be. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a simple way of handling. It's just the interlocking mm -hmm. so, 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 so one question is that that exhibit space um, that's open to above can that be overflow? Well, yes, yes, yes. that's that it can be right. Flow. It's not going to be fixed. It's not going to be fixed with exhibit space or or walls or anything like that. It's just going to be no, an open area. It's all open, and you know, above it's it's open to above, so it's two story space and light can come in. Even okay. it's one way of arranging chairs uh, for seating. Maybe you don't even need that many seats. Maybe it's more, you know, get more exhibit space to walk around the walls. Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, can you go to next one, Dan? Um. Uh, I So then this is really the second floor, you know, coming up from the public coming in, there's kind of control lobby here. They can go into the clerk treasury side or into the village manager or HR, kind of ring around here. This is a two, this is a two-story space open to the exhibit below, which also has windows, allows daylight to come in. Um, there is a connection here, but there would be a control door into the police uh, facilities, but that does would make it there's have to be any in-person meetings. Uh, between the chief and village manager, the tenants, whatever, multi offices over here, uh, you know, allows that to be to happen. Um, okay. Also, you know, the chief wanted uh, some space for training, classroom type space that has, you know, movable chairs and, and a movable partition also. Uh, and then one of the further meetings, they're talking about an emergency command center. So this, even though there's something in the fire department now, this, is, this would be a, a, a logical place to create the capability if there's something that the police needs also for emergency. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Did, Greg, have you the 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 police department which was just received the accreditation? Um, have you spoken to the chief? Um, they when I was there at the exit interview, they made a comment about our facility, and I don't know if you had time to talk to the chief since it was probably about a month and a half ago. We we have we haven't seen it ready, but she basically related the three critical pieces. One was uh, the lack of a uh, secure passageway mm -hmm. of the police detaining areas to into the courtroom and back. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. This one's the Sally Court, right? And then the third was the impound area, some kind of a place where vehicle impound, any, anything that they see in property. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you mean like a seized, like a seat, like a vehicle that was seized overnight and that has to be impounded for a period of time? Yes. Yeah. No. The evidence? Okay. And, and in the evidence, we haven't, we, I skimmed over, but there's an evidence room in the basement, which is also a larger court storage room in the basement. Um, so we're packing a lot in there. Um, yeah, this is basically, this is, you know, some more building and planning up here, um, with some office, conference room, also a secure area where, you know, pull off the elevator or up the stairs. Uh, and then and then a window and, and a you know, secure controllable access uh, into that room. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, I you know areas for solar panels. You know there's different types of mechanical equipment we'll need on these roofs. But you know we, we did have the cost estimator include some space for green roof and some space for solar so, panels. Can you go to S Dan? Can you go back to SD three if you're controlling the screen? So you see this expanded, yeah, no, go, no, right there. You see this expanded parking, what we call the Johnson lot, which is off of Library Lane. Can we, Greg, is it possible to add solar panels onto that parking lot as well as, well, I don't know if we want to add solar panels to the one on, on Mount Pleasant, but this one here is kind of below. Yeah. Um, would we be able to add solar panels to that? The answer is yes, Gary, and, and you okay. often see that over parking where cars park in under the panels. It gives them some shelter from the sun and, and, and climate, and climate okay. weather. Um, and we, we showed it in the renderings, and, and, and cost estimators also included some allowance for at least a portion of this. Uh, okay, good. Oh, these are just a couple of drawings. Uh, we've got 13 drawings from the structural engineer, uh, plant and detail. So they went ahead and they did a framing model with part of this exercise. Right? They wow. thought that they have something more real. There's some underpinning of the building. It's basically reinforcing the foundation. You've got to get down below it, send it down into the ground further. 
Um, I think there's a page of detail. These are really just a couple, you know, this is the kind of information that is now on the set. It's still not enough to build the building, but it, it is the estimated of some general set of the type of connection. Uh, and similarly, so that was the plan that, that, that worked on that. And then OLA, Consulting Engineers and Academy of Electrical Fire Protection, came up with this diagram and a narrative, which is in the report, kind of starting to zone off different areas for the police, uh, the existing building, and the two additions are, are new. Um, and different zone controls, which can all be discussed, you know, in more detail in, in, at another session. But they uh, uh, made some reasonable allowances to think, again, for the plus estimator to put their numbers together. Okay. Yeah, just the second floor of that. And then that consulting who helped us with the initial estimate has come back and uh, 24 page report. This is just the first, I think you just came through it, Dennis. You know, they have a bunch of clarifications in it in terms of what, what includes some of the. Area takeoffs and quantities. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we need to dwell on that now. Um, you know, we really keep going down. And then, you know, the bottom line is this last page is mm -hmm. coming up. Yeah. You know, so they, they've done it by, by site and area. The bottom portion of it is also the mechanical electrical site. Um, and it's some contingency similar to what we had before. Uh, and we're right around $50 million for this point eight. So, um, so, so great. Greg and Brian, if I could, so we want to we want to go after grant money for some of the um, well, to some of some of the court security issues that we're resolving, some of the police security issues that we're resolving, um, and also um, to have this as as um, our evacuation center when the school is not uh, when the school is in session and when the school's not in session. We do really well with the school. They're very generous. But when the school's in session, we, we you know, unfortunately can't use it. And, and sometimes we're, you know, we're, we're, we're forced to, to come up with plans. And, and we can't do that since the school is not in session for only 300 days or whatever, the, whatever it is. Um, can, we, can we use this estimate and this report to go after um, that kind of money? Like, is this, is this pretty much set? As far as the uh, executive summary that you're providing, yeah, I think it, I would I would want to talk to the grant person first, but okay. I mean, it's a lot of detail in here. It's it's a very responsible estimate. Um, do we want to package it differently? Right. The focus yeah, can you can sharing? you potentially pull out that the, the stuff that I just mentioned, or or set you know set aside the stuff that I just mentioned. Obviously, you know we're not going to get grant money for new offices and and a new you know. Um, um, a building and, and potential employee parking. We're not going to get all, grant money for that. But the other stuff, there, there, there has to be money available for for um, you know for emergency response and emergency recovery, as well as the uh, the OCA stuff that we're resolving. So I'd say the simple answer is yes. <laughs> Getting to yes, be, we have to just kind of sort out what you know how we can pull it apart and how it's done. Okay. Um, I, I don't see it. I don't see. Uh, <clears throat> in, in one of these lines, which one picks up the elevators? Which one picks up the elevator? Oh, uh, sorry, go, go you were going to put them in for free. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you would. You might know some things about the conveying elevators. system. Okay. Conveying system. Conveying system. So that's two elevators. Um, two elevators, and one with uh, entrance on two sides. That's the police elevator. That's okay, three, so that's, 535. That's four, okay. that's four stops, right? Basically, that's four stops. Four stops. And then the other one in the existing building is also four stops, right? Because there's one basement mm -hmm. up to the mm -hmm. basement. Basement one, two, three. Four stops also. Yeah. Okay. How's that number three? So, how does the number uh, feel? I, it, it looks a little low, but okay. I won't be bidding on it. So well, I, <laughs> and, and, and yeah, and then that also sometimes the way it's distributed between you know building share for it, yeah. buildings, construction does you know different ways to put together. Yep. Okay. That's not the waste way. That's that kind of machinery. Is, is there a is this a project have the ability to be uh, done in phases? For instance, um, the the urgent thing we have is just the deplorable condition of our police department. Right. And and that and and if nothing else happened. I, I, you know, I would be inclined to 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 do that. Is that is that something that 
You can break it up. Um, break it up. Yeah, I think yes, it can be because the police department is clearly a new addition that gets built in. The phasing during construction, how to continue to operate, we would take some, and there's some money allowance in the in the budget for that. We want to look at that more closely. And this assumes um, phasing. It does assume phasing. 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 Okay. Um, the other uh, thing, though, that that is a concern for the village fluids is the existing building still is not fully accessible, right? So, you know, that's a piece that needs to get done at some point, putting yeah. in a new elevator right. and a stair. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's probably no cheap way to do it. You know, with the existing configuration of this building, it's not possible to build an elevator on the inside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we actually have the elevator for this building. Yeah, but that, that would, that's kind of like yeah. based on a major yeah. renovation. Yeah. But we could, if we didn't do anything in this building, itself th there's no space internally yeah. for an elevator on the outside yeah, yeah. Okay. Be, you know doing this in a way to try to maintain the integrity of this building and not have to cut through the roof because the roof lines have very large overhangs and, and that starts to get mm -hmm. you know and it's not that it can't be done constructor wise it just didn't seem to well, from we also have to get through shippo because it's on it's eligible for the register. Right, so, right. And, and so that's got to be factored in. And I do think that getting rid of I mean I, I I think you can make a good case for the for the rear parking lot being two stories, but getting rid of the stone, you know, the stone mm -hmm. sort of patio and stairs mm -hmm. and the big I mean the, the changes to the rear of the building are significant. Oh, and that's gonna have you're just gonna have to make the case of why yeah. it can't be done any other way. And, and but that will take, time. yeah, I, you have, yeah, and time. you'll have to, you that. have to explain yeah. that to Shippo yeah. and yeah. get a, right. you know, get a memo. But yeah, right. but going through, going through the eaves for an elevator would probably be, yeah, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. It just doesn't feel right, and doesn't feel necessary. Yeah, I think there's nothing the right. That might be beyond the pale. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody have questions for Mr. Anderson, Mr. Gata? Thank you. What Thank you. you. What's the next step? Um, well, the next step would be to really move into the design development phase. Um, you know, we have a couple of things that need to be done. Um, we have some uh, proposals for borings and test pits, so both for structural capacity, with the, what the ground earth is, and for drainage capacity for stormwater. Um, we can then get a deal with people engineers to evaluate those findings. And then uh, talking to our village engineer, you know, earlier is, is taking some probes in this building because there's no good drawing to this building. We need to we need to have to open up a few walls and ceilings to get a better look for the structural engineer and understand what we have to work with. Uh, and then really to then we move on, you know, to change to and also we've had discussions about and and, and with some uh, police security consultants just to kind of you know this was the initial layout of plans. There's probably a few tweaks that could be done, should be done. Um, and Including the estimate for resistant glass around the first floor window, uh, but but things like that, accessing now the elevators and stuff. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. The next up, uh, Gina, we're going to have you up next to talk about the dam, and then we're going to do the stuff that's on the agenda for tonight's meeting. Oh, you got you got a mic. All right. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Board. So um, the Mamanic Reservoir Dam has a hazard classification of Class C uh, high hazard dam, uh, which is based on the potential impact of the dam failure to downstream areas. Uh, the dam's current condition rating is unsound. It was determined based on the conditions defined in New York's uh, Code Rules and Regulations Part 673 uh, Dam Safety Regulations. The classification was selected based on deficiencies identified during the most recent inspection uh, conducted for prepar preparation of the engineering assessment EAP and INM reports. Uh, first and foremost, the uh, spillway is inadequate and cannot pass the spillway design flood without overtopping the dam. Uh, a few other deficiencies noted in the reports, the tracks observed on the upstream and downstream faces of the concrete section, concrete walls of both abutments, Spoiling and deterioration of the concrete on the upstream face of the concrete section, uh, missing flashboards at the crest of the, the concrete buttress section, and vegetation uh, observed over the surface of the concrete buttress section and within 10 feet on both abutments. Um, since the, 
uh, since the dam is uh, as an inefficient or insufficient spillway capacity, the structure uh, doesn't comply with the current New York State DEC dam safety regulations. Uh, Uh, a bunch of a couple of options for us to consider. Uh, so, in the so morning before, of October 23rd, both yeah. Jerry and I had a uh, meeting with Don Penestrieri. He is the section chief of the New York State DEC uh, Dam Safety, and John Smith, who's also an engineer at Dam Safety. Uh, yep. The discussion focused on the two conceptual alternatives. Uh, number one was the application for a DEC variance, or as the DEC refers to it, as a uh, deviation from their standard guidance. And the second was the uh, dam replacement. Um, conceptual alternative one uh, would likely consist of a moderate concrete repairs and a grouting program to increase the useful life of the impoundment and support the case for a structurally sound dam uh, that would meet current DEC uh, loading conditions. Uh, the dam would most likely be hardened to accommodate the overtopping of the dam during a spillway design flood event. And the earthen abutments would likely be replaced with grouted riprap to eliminate the erosion potential. Um, based on our discussions with the DEC, the variance alternative would, would involve an engineer analysis to determine the applicable design storm or design criteria, submission of a permit application, and submission of a bid package or specifications and drawing as to what actually would entail this, this entire program that I've kind of described. Um, Mr. Kranisteri advised us to keep them involved at these various phases. They're, they're, they're inclined. They can be inclined to uh, grant us the, the, the variance or deviation from their standard guidance, but they want to be apprised at every section. They suggested meetings that maybe at, at 25%, 50%, 75%, 90% before we just present them with a full option. So I, we can present our case. My question, about, the variance. my question about going for a variance is... If we just have the current arrangement is we just have an agreement to maintain the dam. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't own the dam. Can we apply for a variance if we don't own the dam? The dam. Uh, as far as I understand, there we uh, we do not own the dam, uh, but we are uh, under an obligation to perform the maintenance. Of right. It. And now this would be with this would be considered maintenance. Is you know question for. Uh, yeah, they, they don't call it. I mean, they don't call it a variance. They call it a deviation. We kept referring to variance. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> uh, Pass the mic. Next budget, buy another mic. Yeah. <laughs> it's on order. Yeah, we're waiting. Okay, you know, this is a unique situation. The uh, ownership of this is responsible for the dam. My initial reaction is that the owner of the dam could be the owner of the obligation to apply for the variance, but it would be our obligation to do the work, presumably to do the application and so forth. I, I, I assume they would be willing to make the application as the owner of the dam, even though we have a maintenance obligation. Okay. That's what I, that's what I figured. <laughs> and what about? Us expending funds on a dam we don't owe. There has own. Oh, there has to be some sort of an agreement with the waterworks. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> now that you there is already. Yeah. Well, we have an obligation already under the contract to maintain the entire maintain dam, the dam or to maintain so, portions of it. Yeah. So there would be no problem. There's no problem with the dam paying to satisfy an obligation, contractual obligation that the village has. So are they willing to? Are can they? Um, pay for like you know provide portions or it's just really just all on us i mean i'm i guess i'm having a hard time not saying that we can't or should not but are they willing to do we know if they're willing to um, provide any funds to help us whether whatever route we choose one two three or four are they could they maybe let's just yes let's just a joint one Certainly, yes. I will see. Let me not give an opinion here. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, so let, let me give a little history. Uh, the West Chester General Waterworks was going to remove the dam at one point, and the village asked them not to. That was the genesis of the maintenance agreement. Um, is and what do, do we do? We want to own it? 
<laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's about owning it. My question is, we had the agreement for us to maintain the dam was sort of limited in scope. And I'm curious to see whether what we're embarking on is within the same scope or whether in order for us to do this, there has to be some different kind of an agreement. That's That was my question. So we asked to maintain- well, My assumption based on past discussions about this at board is that the extent of the maintenance that's required now is the result of a failure to conduct to perform maintenance over the over decades. Yeah. That's my record now. If the facts are different, well, I think I change the legal. I think we need to. I, I think that's something we need to do a deeper dive into. We've talked about it before, and I think we're really at the stage where we have to do that. So you're saying talk about to to go back and and um either release ourselves from the, the contract? No, I, I, I just think we don't, we don't know the answer. I don't know. I mean, I, we don't know whether whether the, 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 the situation with the dam now is a failure on our part or whether it's another failure. And we've talked about this before and we just, you, you, we don't have the facts. Bob has said to us before, we don't have the facts. So I think the we need to get the facts. The dam wouldn't be there if we didn't insist on keeping it. Right. And then that, that's, that's not complete. my, but that's not my question. The actual question is when the, these repair, what the extent of the repair today is necessitated by the failure to perform routine maintenance over the years, or is it from some other, other fact, other thing that happened that was outside of our maintenance, ability, maintenance obligation? Some of the items that I mentioned are failure for routine maintenance, missing flashboards, cracking, spalling. What is not uh, is the fact that the dam cannot pass the spillway design flight. That's a, that's a condition. Say that again. What's not is that the spillway cannot pass the spillway design flight. That's nothing to do with the structure. Yeah, that's why you need to right? That's why we need to seek the variance because we're seeking a, uh, a deviation from their guidance to uh, allow the dam to be hardened on each side, yeah. uh, grouting program and a riprap channel to protect it from these uh, the flows that are experienced during these minor storms that we get. So the, the water going around the dam creates more damage to the dam. Absolutely, you could you could have a failure or a breach if you have uh, rushing water coming around an earthen bag them without uh, uh, reinforcing it. And if we if if we don't do something, uh, are we are we uh, uh, do you yeah. get fined or? Right now, we're we're not in compliance. Okay, so so we need we to have do some time. I mean, we, we we are right now in compliance as far as a reporting criteria. We have right. our engineering assessment; it's been done. Our EAP is updated, and our INM. We have uh, routine maintenance that we can start doing. There's maintenance that needs to be done at the one right. or two year marks. That's you know trimming vegetation, certain small things that our DPW can do. And then as you go more and more time, five yeah. year maintenance, ten year <laughs> maintenance, become more and more. Expensive items, more mm -hmm. detailed items. Well, it, 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 and if they suspect that we we begin dithering now and not not doing it, they may they may they may bring the hammer down. Correct. Yeah, they'll they've already threatened to issue an order on consent. A significant portion of this cost is a result of change in regulations rather than failure of maintenance. Change in, in regulations. I don't know how. I'd have to look at see when the regulations did kind of change, but. Uh, the primary, the primary, like I said, first and foremost, the spillway cannot pass the design flood. That has to be rectified. But it did one time. It was built. It's clearly passed. Pass I guess, guess, you know, if it, yeah, maybe the design criteria back, back in, you know, when it was built, perhaps. Oh, yeah. It was the 20s. Yeah. So, so that may be our creative argument yeah. that this is not all the village's responsibility. Mm -hmm. The large part of the cost is a the result of a change in the required design. Yeah. Well, I just think we have to know that, that we're at the stage where that information has Can to be. Some, uh, I can get some additional. Thank you. What, what sort of time frame do we have? Uh, I can find out from the DEC. I'll give them a call. Right. I mean, right now, with our conversations with them, we are in compliance with the reporting, so they're not, you know, looking at us yet, but we kind of need to make a decision. We, we do, do not want to test them. their patients. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the uh, conceptual uh, option. Uh, that again, our, our consultant prepared was also a new dam. Uh, you know, basically that would require engineering studies, possible land acquisition, mm -hmm. uh, CEQA determination and permitting, 
Uh, this was the most expensive option mm -hmm. of, uh, provided uh, and kind of the most uh, lengthy in time, probably talking close to over $10 million at a, at a time frame of between four and a half, five, possibly six years. So we'd have to get permission from Westchester General Waterworks to build it on that property. Correct. And acquisition to Har no, the properties on Harrison's side that yeah. would be affected as well. Okay. All right, so get the information. I uh, appreciate it. There are never easy choices. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We're going to go to items on for tonight's regular meeting. Uh, correcting the November 13th, 2023 resolution authorizing the purchase of three patrol vehicles. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, which one is that? It says item 3A. Next page. The resolution last time. You can speak up, please. Yeah, that was an error on my part when I prepared the resolution last time. Scrivener? Well, a little more than that, because I, I I, misinterpreted whether or not uh, the board allocated funds in the general fund. Uh, it did not. Uh, so, you know, we need to correct that. Uh, and as I often mentioned, you know, don't think of a police vehicle like your regular passenger vehicle. Think of a police vehicle aging in dog years because it's an operation. 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the most part. So it's it's not like your everyday vehicle in terms of wear and tear. Okay. Everybody fine with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, declaration of surplus vehicles. There's a list in it. Everybody have a chance to look at the list. Mm -hmm. They're kind of aged. The uh, youngest one being 2013. Okay. Uh, everybody fine with selling those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now there's uh, three projects on that are joint projects of the Westchester Joint Waterworks. Uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks, a joint project, is a project that all three municipalities uh, share responsibility in the costs of. Uh, the one is Shaft 22 chlorination system. Uh, this is uh, when, I, when I, so I have it in front of you. When I read it before, what happened is there's an overrun on the cost uh, because of uh, everything's gotten more expensive. Uh, shaft 22 is from the New York City water supply and New York City st stopped chlorinating as heavily so that we have to add chlorine in Yonkers uh, so that when it comes into our system, there's enough chlorine uh, to keep the water uh, in good shape for us. Uh, th there was years ago a facility in Yonkers uh, that uh, Yonkers is letting us use again. And uh, this is uh, updating the cost of that project. I believe we usually pay something like 27 or 28%, I forget off the top of my head, uh, of these joint projects. The largest share, uh, the plurality, uh, gets paid by uh, Harrison. And then the town of America is a smaller share. Uh, remediation of the Westchester Joint Waterward Garage. Uh, the, 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 you know, there's a stuff, uh, asbestos and uh, other stuff. And uh, the garage was damaged uh, during some of the floods. Because if you know the area, it's right by the river over there where it floods, uh, right by the dam. Uh, that's the other capital project. And the other one is the Waverly, Waverly Avenue Bridge Water Main Replacement. Uh, there's a water main by the, that's gonna be disrupted when they uh, remove the Waverly Avenue Bridge and build a new one. And this will, uh, pay for putting in a new one, a new water main at that site. Any questions or concerns about those projects? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next one, uh, item one for tonight's regular meeting uh, is a change order to implement municipi municip municipality five in the Department of Public Works. Uh, Jerry, do you want to explain that? Sure, Mayor. Um, Jerry, I so can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? It's just really low. It's just yeah. really low, yeah. Let me get close to my laptop. Does that look good? Well, it sounds better. It doesn't look any better. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Walking into that one. Did, so since late summer, uh, probably around the middle of August, um, everyone in planning <coughs> and, and in building has been working with Municity 5. Uh, it's completely implemented and working well. And so we wanted to wait a couple of months before we added 
the element that we didn't add originally because we wanted to make sure things were able to get off the ground and, and move over from Municity 3 to Municity 5. So we're asking for $4,400 as a change order for DPW to be trained and to be able to do code enforcement because we're actively going after Mamaronic Avenue and Business District uh, garbage, as well as people who put garbage out without containers. And you can, you'll know that it's very inefficient for us to be out there at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., send a bunch of pictures to our code enforcement officer, and then he or she do all that work. Um, it's a lot easier for us to be able to do that ourselves. And in our code, I can designate individuals to write uh, tickets uh, for these kinds of issues. So we're just trying to maximize efficiency by improving the code enforcement for some of the items that everyone on the board receives my emails and my pictures, as well as the department heads. Okay. Any questions or concerns for Jerry that's on tonight's agenda? If, if, to, in order to designate people to write tickets, do they have to get a stipend? No, I uh, some have to and some don't, and we already have those stipends established. So there won't be new stipends? No, they would just be the ones in the budget. Okay. Thank you. And they're 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 active now, or they're just no. They're they're active. They do uh, illegal dumping behind the okay. public works building. They do um, um, weekend stuff. They do stuff like that. Um, and this is a lot of this is also for office staff and James to be able to manage the information that comes in from the sanitation and or other individuals. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions for Jerry on this issue? No. Jerry, to write the tickets, do they have to get a certain amount of training or? No, so the, the building department staff gives them the training, which is pretty simple because it's an order to remedy. That's how we work. Um, and then if they don't remedy the situation, then we issue them a, a violation. So we're really working on orders to remedy at this stage with the department, uh, with the public works department. Because we don't want public works employees to go to court and appear. So we want to just issue the orders to remedy and hope that the warning will help resolve the issue. And then if it becomes a persistent problem, then a code enforcement officer who's not only trained to write the ticket, but also trained to, you know, appear before the court and understand what the issue is. Good to go. Okay. Um... Anything else? Any other questions? I just had a question about item number four, the action items. That's new new to the agenda. What was why is where is it? It's, it's right after the uh, municipal change order. I think uh, we've always had that. Um, that's kind of a vestige from uh, previous uh, iterations of the rules of the board, and I just didn't turn that off in Novus. Um, uh, may I uh, just you know I, I I have one item on there that I'd like to get because I'm not coming back. Okay. So let's, let's, okay. you, you have time to do this in your next meeting. Yeah, but this is really real quick. I just want a consensus. Come on. Let's do it. Fine, Lou. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, two, two I, accessory dwelling units. This is just a request. It's a big ask for, for uh, information from the staff. I'm looking for just a consensus from the board to ask the staff for this information so we can uh, begin the discussion. And, and, and that, that's the information I'm looking for. That's basically those bullet points. You're looking for the bullet point, the information the on those five bullet points. Yes. Okay. I'm if everyone fine. agrees, we can start working on it. Okay. All right. I'm fine with anybody else. Yep. I'm fine. Okay, we're good. Uh, see, that was it. That was it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I had one item on here that I just want to talk about before. Uh, we we have a seven thirty. Uh, uh, pardon me. I'm losing my mind. Seven thirty executive session where a lawyer is. Uh, going to be appearing. Uh, so we have to go into the other room. Um, and one item I wanted to talk about is speed humps in various village streets. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know that the traffic commission have gotten a lot of uh, requests for this. Uh, you can see on Old Post uh, Road, it's been very, very effective. Uh, that's where I go from my work at night. And uh, you can really see people slowing down. And what's gone on 
is that people now instinctively slow down before they hit the bump. Uh, they're not banging over the bump anymore, which makes me believe that, you know, it's, it's changed habits. Um, and, you know, I, I got uh, correspondence uh, from a group of folks on Wagner who were asking for it and a group of folks on Jefferson. And, and the part on Jefferson uh, from the firehouse down to the dead end. So I, I know we're not going to make any decisions here tonight, but I just I, I, I think that speed humps have been a success. And I know they've been a success in New York City and in, well, thank you, New York City and in other communities uh, where they have been uh, implemented. So I, I, especially when you're repaving streets, especially uh, ancillary streets, uh, not you know this, this this isn't something for Holstead Avenue. It isn't something for the Marinick Avenue. It isn't something for Boston Post Road. But on feeder streets, they're very very effective, and the feeder streets are usually residential. Uh, with children playing on them and uh, kids using them to access the schools. So I just ask in the future, uh, if you would all uh, bear that in mind and uh, please think about putting them in uh, where practical, uh, because I think they're very effective and they uh, make our streets safer, which is something we've all heard uh, many, many times from folks uh, who live in the community, especially folks with young children. That's really all I wanted to say about it. Couldn't, right. couldn't we work on making a list of streets where they're appropriate because they're appropriate some places and not other places and just have that I think the yeah. engineer is shaking his head yes yeah, yeah I mean there are there are there are general characteristics of the type of street that yeah. appropriate yeah. It, if you I think I think New Rochelle did a good job uh, because they have an application and the application gets reviewed by DPW and um uh it it, it would correspond with the streets that that would be appropriate for speed humps. Um, so if if the board would allow us to create and somewhat follow the process that um, New Rochelle has already developed, I read through that um, page by page, and, and I thought it worked really well in that regard. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. They, they've dealt with it w without going from street to street to street, you know, basically on, on phone calls. Um, they dealt with it pretty systematically, I think, anyway. And you know, if you drive in Manhattan uh, with great regularity, almost every side street, you know, not yeah. the apps, uh, yeah. has them now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And, you know, all of that about all you can't plow, you know, if New York City can do it, we can do it. Sure. We can do it better. Where I uh, visit in Florida, it is a, a development. Half of it has speed bumps, half has humps, and you can just see how much better they are. Yeah. It is terrific. It right? is terrific. I think this is a no brainer. All right. Uh, does anybody have the information for the executive session in front of us? Okay. Right. Is there just uh, advice of council? We just on, needed the wording. On the, um, is it advice of council session to get update on there? Oh, is it advice okay, of the cable TV yeah. franchise? Oh, sorry, no. Advice of council and cable franchise. Uh, we, we're going to go into advice of council uh, in the side room to talk with uh, the attorney who's uh, negotiating a contract with the uh, cable TV people. So thank you all. I need a motion to end the work session. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. To your Aye. bathroom quickly. Darren, <laughs> you want to come in? Thank you, Gina. One more, one more job. <laughs> Well, it just, it just makes sense to make a look, right?
November 27th, uh, 2023, Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you all. Uh, <clears throat> there are two emergency exits, one on my right and one on my left. Uh, please use them, uh, file out uh, calmly in the event of an emergency. If you have the cell phone, I'm sure you will do. Uh, please put it on mute. Um, and I need a motion to open the meeting. No vote. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, all right. First item on the agenda, there are no presentations for us. That's a, a hopeful sign. Uh, the first item on the agenda is address the board. Uh, it's a three minute time limit. Uh, so please use your time accordingly. Uh, that's three minute, it's three minute, one time. One. Good evening. I hope everybody had a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm not going to be long tonight. I really wasn't uh, originally planning on coming, but I just wanted to uh, come and show my respects and thank you, Tom, for your service. Um, people did disagree with how you were the mayor, but you know what? It's a, it's a tough job. You did the job to the best of what you thought was your abilities, and we do thank you for your service. Otherwise, as as a party gift, I'm done for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> best gift ever. Best gift ever. Thank you, bud. It's like it's like Christmas morning. <laughs> thank you, buddy. I will miss you. Uh, the next, the next uh, person who would like to uh, speak for three minutes. Good evening, Mayor and Board, and uh, hope you guys all had a good Thanksgiving. And uh, thank you, Mayor Murphy, for your service, um, and thank you for letting me serve. Um, I'd like to put forth something that I can say to the members of the Flood Committee, and um, we will be discussing it tomorrow night, but. I think it's time sensitive, so I wanted to present it tonight. Um, the thought is to get the Army Club topic going, as I had said at the October 16th meeting, and Catherine Parker is here to, to talk about possible funding to the county. So I really don't know the details of how she would do that, but I sent uh, my members and then Leilani and Mayor and trustees, an email last, I think it was last week, yeah, mm -hmm. um, asking for four sets of funding to do to get the Army Club project started Center Avenue Bridge, Needle Lane Bridge, Open Channel across the parking lot, and Harbor Heights needs a new uh, HMA study, which the Army Club knows about. So I'd like to just put this into the record for tonight. Give, give it a sell. Thank, Thank you. And I'd like to ask Catherine to. Talk about the urgency of, of doing whatever you have to do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, trustees. Um, so, Tony, you asked how how the funding goes. Well, it goes very quickly. Your email that you sent this weekend to the mayor and the board of trustees and and uh, Jerry Barbaria, the village manager. They acted upon your email. I received a, an email from uh, village manager, Jerry Barbario, uh, including a request, a, a formal request from the village of Mamarida for um, funding for the, the projects that you have listed. And he specifically, and we followed up with a conversation today on the phone. So the first two, um, uh, things that you wanted funded, the Ward Avenue Bridge and the Center Avenue um, Bridge, 
Both of those projects were identified by the Army Corps of Engineers. We have $12 million that we has been sitting in our capital projects designated for the Village of Mimanic Army Corps of Engineers project. So once the village gets the, the okay, then we can tap into that money and help Start you with that, with that first phase. Um, Mayor Murphy, thank you for your partnership and, and you had, um, had responded with a, an email uh, actually about a, a month ago after uh, uh, Tony had also reached out on behalf of, of the flood mitigation um, committee and you had sent a request for additional study. Um, so that I have on my list for Good. my requests for 2024, that's a, that would be a new request for funding. And in fact, the you mentioned the um, the Jefferson parking lot, uh, that also was new as far as um, the, the project goes. It would be an additional study. Right. Uh, the village manager had put a number of 150 to that, 150,000. So I have put that together on my list. And then um, given that there's a, a strong possibility that the, the price for the Army Corps of Engineers project is going to be uh, increased, then we would imagine that the county share is going to be increased. So I am requesting an increase to that $12 million placeholder that will be more in line with what we're probably looking at. And um, we will start that process of negotiation with the, um, with the county executives administration, but we all know the county executive is in full support of helping them. So I think that this is really going to be um, good for the village. When we're working you know, together in unison, I think the work that the, the flood committee has done in conjunction with all of you um, and the communication that we have had has been excellent. And that's how we keep furthering flood mitigation for the village of Americ. So I will end there and just say- Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for, your and thank you for everything thank you've you done for much. us over the years. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Um, Mayor, if I can add to Legislator Parker, um, I am going. To, I am going with staff, uh, county staff, uh, on Wednesday, to um, look at all the points that the Army Corps is working on, all the items that we have done, all of the river maintenance we have done. So we're going to spend an hour plus with county staff to go around and uh, show them everything that we've been doing in the village. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Jeff, what kind of question? <laughs> <laughs> Declaratory statement. Is there, <laughs> is there anything we should be doing in terms of you know working with the Army Corps because we're changing sort of the mechanism of the project and doing some of it ourselves with county funding? Well, we've already the, the Army Corps is all aware of right, that. but I mean, just it's 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 a, we usually usually they want to be involved with it and and have previously said. Um, then who wants to be involved? Has previously requested has previously been the body that has been in charge of the project, and that it, it, there, Catherine had sent an email after the October twentieth meeting, just making sure that um, if if we or we with the county undertake some of the work, the Army Corps is still on board. So I just want to make yes. sure the, the Army the Army sure. Corps was is, is going to come up with an agreement between the county and the state uh, mm -hmm. for these ancillary projects so yeah. technically we've been waiting for them for that agreement and so that's why so it wouldn't be something that we have to do we actually waiting for them right so i think they're very much in under and i have an understanding of yes. what every all the plans are moving forward even right. with the county let's do it hi uh, my name is alana i'm on park avenue and i'm here tonight to speak out against a proposed zoning code change in the village, which would have unintended consequences of increased density and reduced quality of life. I'm talking about ADUs, accessory dwelling units, as per Trustee Young's uh, work agenda item, I think it was postponed, you had five questions that you're starting with. But accessory dwelling units, ADUs, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of talk a little bit about because I'm not sure if everybody knows a lot about it. Um, accessory dwelling units morph single family zoned neighborhoods into multi family neighborhoods. They essentially allow homeowners to rent out parts of their home 
Picture a family moving into your neighbor's garage, or three families living in a single family, or a crane delivering a prefab trailer into your neighbor's backyard in order to house an additional family. All of these situations are currently a reality in California where ADUs are legal. It essentially urbanizes our suburb. If this proposal comes to fruition, we can expect less parking and more traffic, more noise, increased municipal expenses, more developers buying up properties with the unintended consequences of subdividing them to make a quick buck. As per the proposal that was on the work agenda, ADUs, in a sense, we would be subsidizing, sorry, as per the, okay, ADUs, in a sense, um, we would be subsidizing with our tax dollars those expenses. So if you, if the proposal had said that we would give tax deductions to people who rent out ADUs. Uh, if we were to do that, who would pick up the slack? It would be on the backs of all of the other village taxpayers. Why would we give homeowners who rent ADUs a tax break? Landlords would already be collecting rents while their tenants would be increasing costs to our village. It would be increased sewage, increased garbage. It would be uh, wear and tear on our infrastructure. Um, we're essentially offering to have single family homeowners pay for services that should be covered by the landlord. We're offering to give away other people's money. But that's beside the point. For people who purchase single family homes, they did so with the expectation, expectation for more space, for more parking, for peace and quiet. People have worked hard and have saved for years to attain their goal. It is not right to take that away. But with ADUs, single family homeowners will pay a steep price, increased density, lower quality of life with higher taxes. Kathy Hochul's proposal for ADUs was strongly opposed by both Democrats and Republicans, and for good reason. No one wants to have their home sacrificed. They put away so much to be scrunched away into a high density that with all the problems that come along with ADUs, they deserve the homes they work for. I understand that you only need three votes to put this through, but please, I'd like you to ask yourself, what would the voters want? After all, that's who you serve. Thank you. Stuart Hinker um, and Tom, it's been a while, six years, but as you've evidenced, the rapprochement between me and Norm, all things are possible in the future, and I do wish you the best. Um, I have three quick things. I drove over the Waverly Avenue Bridge today. Has the IMA been signed at the town? We, we voted to approve it. Last, Sally, was it last Tuesday? Yeah. It was Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so in one of the... At, at the okay, at when we met, the at one, yeah. Okay. Um, the dam. <laughs> I listened to the work session. Um, I'm amazed that there's still a discussion going on about the village doing work on the dam. One is my understanding that the only responsibilities the village has to the dam is to maintain the openings that were put in it in the 70s and the grates that went over the openings. We've spent $100,000 on engineering studies and probably a lot of time with the village engineer doing his reports. And it just seems like it's not our responsibility. I just don't understand why it continues. Um, and the last thing is Municipality 5. I heard on um, the work session that it's fully <laughs> operational. We've now bought Municipality 5 twice. Um, my understanding is Municipality 5, one of the functions was always intended to create a public interface for building apartment records. As far as I know, that hasn't been done. 
is that still one of the intents of municipality five? That's a Jerry question. I, I understand. I'm not sure he's still on. Are you but... asking Jerry to answer, Norm? I don't think Jerry's on. I, well, I can't tell. And the clock's running. Continue your statement, please. Not all. I just, um, as I said, the dam, let's stop spending money on something that's not our responsibility. And Minnesota 5, if the intent was to create a public interface, we should because the building department can't seem to produce records otherwise. Thank you. Thank you. And anybody else like to address the board? Good night, Tony. Robin Stark, Seminole, for Palmer Court. I have the, the Marinette Library hat. Uh, most of you have seen me wearing this hat. I got this a year ago when the library was voted best library in Westchester. You can get it for $15 to go to, go to the library. Um, I had probably used the library as much or more than anybody that I know. And I could spend hours talking to you about all the wonderful things that the library does. The library is, is having an important election on Wednesday, December 6th at the library from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. You'll be voting on uh, appointing, uh, voting for four trustees, library trustees, and voting whether or not to approve the budget for, for the library for the following year. The library, I don't know what you mean. The, the, the library has made significant progress in trying to figure out its financial house. And it's it's critical that this budget be approved in order for them to continue making progress in getting the library back uh, where it belongs. So if you're unable to get to the library on Wednesday, December 6th, you can go to the library, go to the front desk, ask them for an absentee ballot, and you can fill out an absentee ballot and go to the library. I, I love the library and I'm encouraging everybody to go out and support your library. It is a wonderful, one of the best resources we have in this community and we all should, all should, should support it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Amy Siskin, Skibo Lane. Um, I wanted to just speak about the DEI resolution that I saw. And first, I want to applaud our village as of next Monday. On our board, we'll have three of five women and three of five people of color. Um, so I want to celebrate that. Uh, however, one thing we have failed on is anti-Semitism. And there was an issue that came up that local clergy had alerted many of you, all of you to. We received emails and those still have gone unaddressed. So I believe any DEI initiative should include the BOT and should include training on anti-Semitism. I believe it's a basic courtesy for anyone on our board and our mayor. Uh, when local clergy avails themselves to write to you to respond uh, and to take them up on the opportunity to learn. We have a large Jewish community in our uh, village there's a record amount of anti-Semitism, and I would encourage you all to be trained so we can all move forward together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rega? Yes. I call. Hopefully everyone has a great Thanksgiving. You do? Yep. How many turn the days? Valley, just so that you walk back. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome, guys. We have to talk about that. Mm -hmm. right. That's damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with this, right, Lou? Yeah, that makes everything. <laughs> so, Carl Rock on Melbourne Avenue. Um, so this has to be a reference to the commercial lawn equipment that we're talking about buying, mm -hmm. battery. 
And I attended the last meeting in environmental, who was there, or was there three other individuals back there? So I basically went home and said, you know what, let me see. Uh, and so the battery unit is another solution. So one of the solutions, as you can see, and I'm gonna ask Lou in order to read the highlighted um, information. This has been directed to just, just us two? Together, oh, yeah, you guys do you want, oh, want us to read it aloud? <laughs> aloud? Yeah, like, Together or separately? separately. It's too important, basically. <laughs> so this comes from Twin Cities. So it has to do with uh, propane, basically, for the rider instead of battery. Battery will take place in the future, and I'm all for it. But right now, the technology is not there. It's doing the same job as the gas <laughs> lower, basically. So what I'd like you to do, either Nora or Luke, the first one, where it says propane, and you can read the highlight there. If possible. Okay, I'm happy to start. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. So propane. Propane engine propane engines can produce lower amounts of some harmful emissions, including carbon dioxide. The cleaner burning nature of propane may result in reduced maintenance requirements, such as less frequent oil changes and extended mower life. Okay, so that's a possibility. And, and you can uh, basically find for the machine in the machine. Um, number one, John Deere's is what we have. So that's the first one. And then the second one basically has to do with the catalog. I, I feel like I'm in court. Can you, you well, know, I'm reading, well, reading my grand jury you testimony. Did, you guys learned so excited about that. Uh, um, uh, all right, this is uh, unusual, but uh, okay, Cadillac Exhaust Products is a custom manufactured high performance three way catalytic converters for small and large engine applications. The three way catalytic converter is designed to operate on natural gas, propane, and gasoline fuel spark ignition engines and will provide high performance reductions in all major exhaust gas emissions. So, it's so. an adapter basically that we can stick on our current equipment, which is going to help the environment as well. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. All right. Uh, we'll um, we give this to the staff and see if they like like right. it. All right. That's it. Tom, thank you. quickly. Thank you for the last six years. Thank you for all the years of being you know, our trustee. Not only here, also the town of Marin. Thank you very much for sitting on all the things. And thank you for your friendship over here. It's been great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Stay around, And Mary. <laughs> Anybody else would like to address the board? My name is Lorena, I'm the Senator of Gardens. Um, I'd like to address an issue of the proposal to build a unit across from the police station that will house, I believe, was 180 units. We're going to increase the number of residents and use parking spaces. We don't need more residents, we need more parking spaces and less residents. The Marriott has reached its saturation point. It's getting miserable here. We're overcrowded. The avenue's a mess. It's just, it's too much. Enough is enough. We don't need any more building. And as I said, it's just, we do not need to lose parking spaces. What should be done is that parking lot should be, I understand it needs to be replaced, build an additional tier because we need more parking spaces. And that's what should be done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, Randy Robinowitz, 540 Long Terrace. So, um, John, I've been to very many meetings, and I'm not, uh, but I'm here today because. Uh, it's the end of an era, and for some, we welcome that with glee and joy, and um, and for others, it's just a, a time of transition. So I'm hoping that the good spirit and a really quite beautiful sense of community that many found this uh, particular season continues and goes forward with, with um, good intentions and a continued sense of community that was so, um, quite frankly, uh, touching and brought together. Um, and in that spirit, I'm hoping you'll um, support your new board, but I myself have to just personally tell you my experiences with our outgoing mayor, Tom Murphy. I met Tom, it's hard to believe, 28 years ago. Our children were in nursery school together. And, um, 
And I was, uh, you know, I was, he was just a regular guy. And uh, as I got to know him and I served with him as a trustee in the village of Maranek, I was very impressed that Tom really showed uh, a good sense of knowing what was right and wrong. And, um, and I really saw in my mind that he had good judgment. And I thought he made ethical decisions, but always benefiting the village. We worked together uh, as a board of Democrats, but believe me, by no means a board of uh, everyone agreed with everything. So um, Tom, I just want to tell you what an outstanding mayor you've been um, and what a long list of accomplishments you have. I think it's now time for you to look into the next chapter of your life. And in that life, you certainly have earned and I think deserve some peace. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping some of the kindness that he now deserves will come his way. Mm -hmm. And I want you to enjoy the rest of your life. So for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to find what truly brings you joy, your family, your friends, and your walks in nature and, and the beauty of that. Because in these things, Tom, you're a very rich man. Yeah, thank you. So thank you for your service. Thank you for your integrity. And um, I just wish you the very best. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for your friendship. Hi, uh, Alyssa Miller, Chief One, Herbert Hill. Um, I concur with everything uh, Randy said. I'm here for you tonight, Tom. Um, it has been six years since I actually stepped into this room since I served. Um, and I have really been grateful for your leadership, um, for getting things done, for showing up, for listening to people, even when they didn't agree with you. You never kicked them out or avoided them. You embraced those. And you listened and you did whatever you could in your way to make things right for this village. And as a result of that, there's so many things that are getting done that I worked on for 10 years in this village. We have the Army Corps of Engineers finally coming through. We just heard Catherine Parker tonight going to get some more money for us. You've got, you know, the, the bridge on Boston Post Road. We're getting a sidewalk. You know, that was something I ran on many, many years ago. Um, I can't even begin to list all of your accomplishments because I didn't even write them down. <laughs> but I, um, I hope that I speak on behalf of so many people who couldn't make it out tonight to thank you from the bottom and top of our hearts for everything. Um, from even, you know, the time you served as a trustee yeah. way, 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 when I moved into this village about 20 years ago, you were always approachable on the train when I was commuting. You were always there. And so thank you. Thank you for being someone that people could go to, that people can be heard, be seen, and for someone who can get things done. I applaud you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, um, Hillary from Hillary Shop 151 Fenimore. Um, many of us are grateful for all that you've done in the last six years, especially as you led us through the flooding, through the flooding and COVID. You had the vision to stand up for the projects that many were afraid wouldn't work out. I am especially grateful that you supported and helped to elect trustees, Geyser Reed and Rawlings to the board and that you've always been kind to them whilst they found their way. <laughs> and you, but you were here before. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sorry, Lou. It's okay. I know your many That's years... song two out of three of <laughs> <laughs> I know that your many years of service to the village will be remembered for many years to come this year. Since having, this year since having the new board, so much progress has been made in the community. Things were stuck for too long. I hope you will not be a complete stranger, as I know many of us will need your wisdom and sage from time to time. I wish you well in your future endeavors and know that whatever you decide to do will be for the greater good for all. Thank you, Tom. Thank, Thank you very much. much. You're, you're on your own funeral? Wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it was drinking, it would be my way. <laughs> 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 um, Alex Gross, Valley Road. I was made to learn that at the work session earlier today, some of the initial legislation was discussed as to do with the inclusionary zoning practices in the village of Marion. Um, as a member of this community and as a member of the school districts in kindergarten, I would like to speak in support of this legislation. I mean, under inclusionary zoning practices, it has to do with um, AMI, uh, area mean income of people who can even access these units, as well as the percentages required to, make, to be affordable in these developments. Um, there are over 400 different inclusionary zoning programs in this country, and they are expanding every year. But these programs only work under two key factors, and that is these policies are not only being enacted, but are being enforced, and that these policies are targeting the right people who deserve to live in this community and deserve to live in affordable units. Because every community needs affordable units, and it's up to us, the members of this community, to make sure that these, these units are maintained and as of legislation, look like any other unit within our community, an um, affordable or market rate. Um, and I just want, I hope that this can be put into actual policy and that we can expand and uh, further strengthen our inclusionary zoning program within the Village of Mariner. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. All right. Thank you all very much. Uh, let's get to the agenda. All righty. Uh, the first is a public hearing on PLLZ. A lot of a lot of laws this year. What we do? Land use application requests. Bob, this is just uh, to correct. Go please. Well, it's, it's to to clarify and make apparent on the face of the code that the law that you passed, uh, changing all the notice requirements a few months ago. <laughs> Supersede state law if you right. go right under under right. the law. The question came up after it was passed on whether it superseded. <laughs> the law itself provided that it superseded, but that piece of the law was not codified. So this codifies it and makes it clear to anyone who looks at the code of the future that these provisions are what you have to follow, not the separate rules of state. Gotcha. And, and ours are more stringent than state law. Uh, they're different. They're yeah. they're more modern. They, they do away with publishing in newspapers, which is costly and I think in most people's judgment is then Yeah. 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 I, I can't remember the last time I actually had a paper newspaper. What what comes after PPLC? AA. What? They were already well past it. Okay. All right. Uh, I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any questions or concerns? Anybody from the audience wish to address this issue? All right. Anybody from the board wish to address this issue? No. All right. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Would anybody like to make a motion to adopt this law? I move to adopt the PPLZ. 2023. I second. P uh, PLLZ. I second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you all. Next item on the agenda is 2A. Abstract of vouchers. Uh, tonight's vouchers are $603,916. And 91 cents. Any questions or concerns? Anybody in the audience, questions or concerns? Stuart Teeker, um, theme five. There are two items for Dana Pest Control. One is a monthly maintenance proposal. Um, the other one is a work order requested by the AD. I'm not sure who the AD is. Um, on the first one, the maintenance proposal, I think this is the third monthly maintenance proposal that we've seen on the order of the bills. Does the board know what this monthly maintenance proposal is for? I thought that was AD. 
Okay, so again, you're supposed to know what you're paying for. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's good to use taxpayer money to pay for things you don't know what you're paying for. Um, and the second one, who is AD in that? Work order requested by AD charged at $250 an hour. Is that for one person, two people? It seems like a pretty heavy rate. And what page are you looking at? I'm sorry, page five, middle of the page, two Dana pest control items. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't even okay. see it. Again, it says spending eight. Our money without knowing what okay. you're spending it on. Um, page eight, Abrams Fensterman. Uh, $14,850 on Village of Mamaronek v. Teaker, or Teaker v. Village of Mamaronek. And I'm sure the public doesn't know, and I'm not sure if the board knows, but um, before this case was filed, um, my attorney spoke with the village attorney and offered to settle it. Um, and as my understanding is, the village attorney turned down that proposal without consulting with the board, um, which I don't think is really appropriate. I think an attorney is supposed to bring any offer of settlement to the board. So I'm not sure you should pay that. Page nine, Keller Sessions audit and foil for stormwater MS4. I'm not sure why the consulting engineer is working on the MS4, but today I received the audit from the DEC of the MS4 program, and the village received an unsatisfactory, the lowest grade, as it were, that you can get. Um, so there's work to be done, clearly, um, and I hope this board or the new board will get on with it. As, um, associated with that is Dennis Drogan. Thank you. Is the first person I know of who's gotten training in MS4. Um, one more item and I'll be out of here. Yeah, so time is up, so please. Live don't... View Technologies, are we paying them monthly? Is that what it is? And the other question is, can we remove these cameras? These are the river cameras that didn't seem to work all that well. So the question is, is this a monthly or a new fee? Mm -hmm. And again, there's more. Fred Cook, no, we're paying you, Fred Your time was up a while back. Space. Please, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So I would just ask that you remove the item. You don't know what you're paying for. You're Thank you. Supposed sir. to by law know what you're spending Thank our you. money on. Thank you. I need a motion to approve. The vote. In a second. Second. Sorry. Call the roll, Sally. Trustees Rawlings. Yes. Yazari. Yes. Young. Yes. Lucas. No. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Report from the village manager, Jerry. Now, Mayor, I have two items that we're filing for the record. One of them is an intermunicipal agreement with the DEC for our recycling app that uh, a lot of municipalities, I think almost all municipalities in Westchester um, uh, contribute to, as well as the shared service agreement for um, sustainable Westchester for the waste and recycling communication platform. And I hope I get a chance later on this evening um, to talk about, well, maybe I'll just do it now. So I've never worked with someone and I've worked with two county executives and you know, one of them I worked very closely with and two mayors um, and you're the third. And I've never worked with someone who has been so engaged and so responsible uh, to the people of the community. That's not to say that the other mayors were not, it's just that you were so much and the way you supported our staff and the way you showed up and never left during our emergencies and some of the things that you really respected as far as our form of government to um, 
to make sure that you spoke to me before you spoke to a staff member or how you supported certain things in the village um, that staff just couldn't figure out or just couldn't deal with because it was a, on a personal level and some of us are not so personable. Um, and it, it worked really well. And I'm glad that you have plans for the future. I'm glad you got two grand boys. I'm glad you have family close by that stayed close by um, because now you can show them uh, the amount of time and attention you show to this community. Uh, and it's really been great to work with you since um, since February of, of 2019. We were we went through a COVID pandemic. We went through SIS. We went through Ida, and we went through Ophelia. And um, I'm hoping that you know when you leave, we never have another disaster again. But the reality is, um, we're going to miss you when we do. And I appreciate everything that you've done for us. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate and enjoyed working with you. And uh, frankly, the Village of America has the best staff of any municipality in Westchester County. And Thank you. Was, we made sure of privilege. that. It was a privilege to get you to know you all. Thank you. All right. Thanks for that. Uh, these reports? No. No, he, 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 he hit it all. Old business. Uh, resolution authorizing funding for capital projects for the parks department right on mower. Okay. Uh, we at, 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 the, at the work session, we talked about the ride on mower. And this is a complicated uh, piece of equipment. It isn't just you know, a, a lawn mower. Uh, the head of the parks department was uh, the rec, the parks department, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Ahn was here and he, he explained uh, in his view, uh, the utility of getting the uh, the uh, diesel powered mower and because it, it would allow them to do more and it would allow them to uh, know that they have a product that's going to be able to mow as he poured out the 144 acres yep. that they mow week. every week. week. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, respecting uh, his expertise, uh, I, I think the board, uh, is, is leaning toward uh, the diesel mower. Or defer, right? Yeah, please. Uh, deferring to the staff on this. Now, now two weeks ago, you know, the, the some folks in the audience had kind of sticker shock because this thing cost, uh, the thing that we were going to buy was 41 grand. Well, this one ain't that much cheaper. I mean, these, these are expensive pieces of equipment. Yeah. So, uh, so um, it's not like we're we were going to spend forty-one grand on a piece of electric equipment, and the other one would cost five. No, it, I think it costs what thirty, thirty-three, thirty-eight, about thirty-four thousand. What? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. All right. So uh, there was thirteen thousand dollar difference. Yeah, thirteen thousand dollars. So, uh, so it, it's um, you know, we, we got to do what we got to do. So there you go. Okay. And we have not costed out. Carla's suggestion. We could do that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Did you hear that committee for the environment? All right. Any 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 questions concerns about this? No. no given me given me uh, the lead time on buying this, they need it. Uh, we we should uh, just uh, just get it done. I think. Good night, kids. Good night. <clears throat> if we order it now, it'll come in probably around the beginning of May, May fifteenth, and that's exactly when. Things get, you know, right. things get crazy at the parks department. Mowing season. Right. And I will say we we did say last week that we were going to discuss it at this at the usually we discuss these kinds of things at work session, but we said we would discuss it at this session because there were so many people who wanted to speak on it and some of you are here tonight. So I just I wanted to make, you know, and <clears throat> it's a piece of equipment that we have to replace. The we spent fifteen thousand dollars repairing the one we have. So it doesn't make sense to keep keep the one we keep have. We have to replace it. it. It's we're saving some money, but it's not an expense we can avoid. So, so if anybody wants to talk about it, now's the time. Okay, I'll make a motion. Oh, 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 I thought I wrote Rick. You guys were here two weeks ago, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. I decided to come often to watch my money being spent. My name is Victoria. I'm on Rally Road. 
Um, and I, I sat there and listened to someone question the $600,000 and no one could answer what any of that money was for. And that's worrisome. And then I keep hearing about Dana pest control. The rats are out of control. So clearly Dana is not doing what they should do. So, you know, everybody here, I'm sure goes to the supermarket and sees the lobster that they want, but they can't afford it, right? And I get it because we're doing the same in my house. My kids love filet mignon. It can't happen, right? And I appreciate that you guys really thought about the purchase of the mower and made a different decision. And that is great. That's, we need more of that. But again, we just had $600,000 and nobody knew what those things were for. Why are we paying bills that we don't know what they're for? Who knows what they're for? Those people on Zoom, like who knows what the money, the money is not flowing forever, right? We have to watch our money. All of us, I'm sure everybody in this place is watching what they spend at the supermarket. And it is through the roof, the water works is through the roof. We all have to watch our money. And again, there's Dana Pest Control. Is anybody following up? I think the last meeting they were charging us for like a checkup fee. Don't they get paid enough that they're getting paid more? Who's watching over them? Who is checking? We have rats in daylight strolling down the avenue. So what is the are they effective that we keep paying them? I mean, it's it's sad. And you know what? We are one in the Marinette. We are all here for the best of our village. And that's the way it should be. There should be no us against you or anyone else. You've been elected and yes, you make hard decisions. Nobody likes, nobody's gonna agree with everything. That's okay, but we have to do better. We have to pull back on our spending and we have to consider all these zoning laws that we're changing because we love the Marinette. Everybody wants to live here, but the reality is if something is only this big, it can't keep switching people in. Density matters. ADUs, I'm against that too. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I come from the city. I've watched my neighborhood. It's destroyed. Take a 15 minute round ride down to the Bronx. You'll be like, wow, we don't want that to happen to Mamara. We can't build on every empty space. We have to consider people that are here. We all want things we can't have. Yes, affordable housing, but we can't, what kind of lottery is it if we're telling the Marinette residents that they're getting in? Sounds like a crooked lottery to me. A lottery is a lottery. You can't guarantee anybody's gonna get a seat in their lottery, right? So I don't know about the whole, we need to rethink it. Two proposals, it's not enough. We should have more. And why aren't we considering more senior living? So maybe these are other things that we can talk about. But right. again, the spending. And good luck to you, Mayor Murphy, and thank you for serving our community. Thank you very much. Have a good thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Liam Robert Egan from the Committee for the Environment. Um, so I've had the work session. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm uh, sympathetic to the argument that the technology might not be there yet for an electric mower. I think what disappointed me was there was no, there was a cost analysis of the upfront costs not the, necessarily the operational return on this. Okay, the fact that we spent $15,000 repairing a mower last year suggests that the gas option has got a lot of downside hidden costs. Um, and I think like as a general rule, I would encourage you to be forward thinking. Okay. I mean, we've got to do everything we can to reduce our carbon footprint. I mean, I was a little disappointed at the work session. We had a presentation on the new building, and there wasn't a lot in there about how sustainable it is, how energy efficient it would be. And I've asked as a member of the committee of environment for some input on that and haven't had much of a response. So, you know, this particular decision, maybe it's too early, but just I think we need to be much more forward thinking when it comes to these things. Thank you. Thank you. And 
Thank you, Tom, for your service. Thank you all for your service. Your unions going to be serving. Whatever the politics, I do appreciate the time and the effort and the energy that you guys put in. You don't get a lot of thanks for it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned about looking forward, and I know this is just a comment of what you said. Um, people tend to look at, at this as people who are already here and people who are not here, and what they don't realize is that we're all just passing through. And and twenty years from now, there'll be different people here, and uh, that's that's the village we're building. Right? Hi, I'm Melissa Miller, and. Um, in regards to the Committee for the Environment, by the way, um, Lou and uh, Ronnie and Manny, if you so wish and have a need for Committee for the Environment, I'd be interested to serve. Um, as a matter of fact, I work on a lot of sustainability practices in the data center industry. And there are ways that you can create open space to have carbon sinks and dedicate natural preserves so that you can offset your carbon output as a village. And so when we think about forward thinking initiatives, how do you create a symbiotic preserved land that is committed to enabling the capture of carbon so that you can do things that aren't yet ready, like having diesel engine and propane power solutions because electric isn't there yet. We don't have enough solar, we don't have enough options, and the options that we do have are very expensive. And so I applaud the village for having um, sensitivity to this, and um, I would be willing to help with some of the expertise that I have in helping the village have a more sustainable future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any right. motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed? No. Aye. 4B, resolution authorizing fund, funding for capital product for recreation tour of work. Uh, Jerry, you want to explain this? Uh, Mayor. So am I muted? No, I'm not muted. No, uh, so Mayor, this is a utility vehicle for the recreation staff who manages the beach for 100 days. And this version of it, the $20,000 version of it, um, based on the feedback that we received at the last meeting, would also be dual purpose where we would be able to uh, do winter um, uh, ice and snow cleanup with it as well. Um, and also put it out to um, the fire department or any other um, department that needs uh, a utility vehicle because some of our events are very expensive. And we talked about this in a work session extensively with uh, Jason Pinto, who's the head of recreation. Any questions or concerns? No. No comment? Well, I think we should probably explain a little bit more about what it is because Jason gave us a good explanation. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's a machine we haven't previously purchased, but we have a small sort of utility cart that we're using um, in that we're using for um, other we're using for other um, events and it's really causing wear and tear on that. It's not meant mm -hmm. for what it's used for. So this is something that allows the um, rec department and to either either hmm? and other departments yes, well to either either help or lend it to other departments for sidewalk cleanup for a variety of things, including snow. So there, it's, it, I think it's a new piece of equipment that's going to be used by a, a, a group of different departments and it's going to save another piece of equipment that we have. Okay. Yeah, currently the recreation department has a, um, a people mover, uh, a four or five person um, golf cart. And because it's big, it gets used for some uses that may end its useful uh, existence uh, a little bit earlier than it should. It's a very valuable to us to have it as a people mover, especially during large events, and if someone gets hurt, which we've used in the past. Did anybody make a motion? Any motion? Some moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 5A, diversity, equity, and inclusion training for volunteer boards and committee members 
And this also includes the Board of Trustees, doesn't it, Lori? This does. Okay. Originally, no, no, this one, just the first okay. one that we passed, we passed the, the one for the trustees and the staff right. was passed a while ago. This one is specifically for um, individuals who are on the boards mm -hmm. and on committees. Especially decision makers, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, questions or concerns? I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, thank you for bringing us to the board's attention. And Jerry, we think the training will start in January. Yeah, so we're trying to make sure, you know, we had to wait for the new board to get sworn in or the new electeds to get sworn in, those kinds of things. And it will, um, uh, and all the commission member changes. So we'll be starting in January with them. Uh, we already have a schedule set up with, uh, with staff. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you. All right, the uh, next item on the agenda is uh, scheduling a public hearing for PLLAA. Uh, the uh, public hearing will be scheduled for December 11th. December 11th, just the next regular board trustees. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we, we passed the leaf flow law uh, a while back, uh, but this is kind of some tweaks that needed to be done. You don't need to. I, I got it. Uh, I, 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 uh, I need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five C, streamlined solar permit. This is something that uh, our friends at the Committee for the Environment were uh, sponsoring, and I think it's a really good idea. Uh, this would uh, make it a lot easier to. Uh, put up solar panels on your house. Uh, you wouldn't have to go to the Board of Architecture Review. Uh, the uh, building department would be doing it. Uh, is that right, Bob? Yeah, that's correct, as long as you met the criteria set for that. Right, okay. <laughs> Excellent. It's, it, it, it streamlines the process and skips the stack. Uh, I need a motion. So moved. And the schedule is the public hearing also for the 11th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Design services proposal for Palmer Avenue crosswalk at the Maronick High School. Uh, this is really for crosswalk by the way Walters is. Uh, I'm very glad that we are using the traffic consultant for this because this is a very dangerous area. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a child killed there a uh, long time, not a long time ago, since I moved up here, so within the last 30 years, there was a child killed there. Uh, if you go by there, uh, when school's open, or on a busy Saturday, there's people running back and forth across Palmer Avenue, and it, 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 it's a hard sight line, right? So if you're coming out of Rich Bell, you, you're just coming up on them, and if you're coming the other way, you're, you're coming from a bend, and you know, there's a lot of people crossing with their kids and all, so if we're going to do a crosswalk, though, we have to do it really smart because we don't want people to encourage people to cross when it's not safe, right? So we have to do more. Maybe a bump out uh, with special signage and everything. And so I'm really glad that we're taking the time and not just painting a crosswalk there, but uh, doing the design to make it safe because I think it's needed, but it's a uh, it's it's a it's, it's a tricky place. Mm -hmm. So, thank anybody have any questions or concerns? Just thanking the traffic committee for being um, diligent about pushing this. Yes. Yeah. Because there, there was a crosswalk there, and, mm -hmm. and when, when the person got killed, uh, so I think they took it out because it was encouraging people to cross. And then, so I think this is the best resolution. Anyway, I'd happily make the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 5E, Sheldrick River Flood and Land Use Assessment Report. Good night, Carla. Have a good morning. Good night, Carla. Thank you. Uh, Jerry, you want to talk about this? Mayor, I want to give it to Dan because there's some brick funding involved and a commitment from 2020. I think he'll recall it a little bit better than I will. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we received a, a grant from New York State in 2020 to conduct an open space acquisition study along the Shell Drake River. This is a project that had been identified in our comprehensive plans, several plans, <clears throat> and in our hazard mitigation plan. Uh, after we were awarded the grant, uh, New York State retained uh, a firm uh, called SLR to do a flood mitigation study of the Mamaroneck and Sheldrake Rivers. And a lot of the work that SLR did as related to the Sheldrake River really was consistent with what we were looking to do with this grant. So uh, we had discussions with SLR uh, while they were completing the report and we wanted to retain them because they had all the data. We, there was gonna be no time to uh, uh, bring another engineer up to speed on it. Uh, they completed their report in September of this year. Uh, we received a proposal from them in October to move forward with this project. Uh, the original grant was for a $75,000 project uh, of which we were seeking $52,000 approximately in grant funding and the board had committed to uh, providing $18,000 uh, for the required match. Uh, subsequent to that, because of the number of awards that the state uh, gave out, there was about $37,000 left or $32,000 left. And if we wanted to move forward, the remaining balance was gonna be on the village. Uh, we did, the proposal we received from SLR was for $75,000, which is consistent with our original grant proposal. And uh, we're looking to move forward with that. Uh, the grant agreement that we have with New York State requires that we expend all the funds by December of 2024. So we're looking to get moving on this uh, pretty quickly, assuming the board approves this. Is no, go ahead. Okay. Um, you have three I, minutes. Yeah, I don't know if this is the same topic, but our committee has, <clears throat> we did a report on the throughway and the effects of the throughway. And we passed a resolution at, it was a previous meeting, the last meeting, asking since, like you say, so I don't know if this is the same thing or not, but. It's, it's not the same thing, right. but it, it is actually, I think it's very consistent with what Okay. The presentation you made at work session on the Greenway, because yes. a, lot, a lot of what you're talking about was there may be a need to acquire property along the Sheldrake, and this is kind of part of that. Because okay. so what what so um, this was never formally presented to the board, which was an analysis that we did of the effects of the throughway on flooding in the Marinette. The report was shared with the board, but it wasn't presented. Um, it's been presented to my committee and it was presented to the flood committee. No, no, you were there, Lola, uh, Leilani, you were there. And um, so, the, the, so, the, so in short, the throughway is 28.2 acres of impervious surface. There's no mitigation whatsoever of the water that falls on that. It goes straight into the highway because it was built in the 1950s. So that's one piece of it. The second piece, which is a little more complicated, is the historical piece that when the throughway was built, they impacted two huge storage areas, one of which is Gardens Lake, the other of which is the is Getty Pond, both of which held back in the 50s a whole lot more water than they do now. Um the in so in the report that I that I have to mention again, um I went back and I went through their documents, the throughways documents about what they have to do when they build new throughway. And they have to have zero impact. And there's statements in there that state that if they have if they have an impact because of historical things, there may be a liability. So we our resolution is to add the FLR to basically validate those results. Because we've had two meetings with the throughway, who was there? and Jerry was there, in which they basically said, okay, that's nice. Thank you, Missy. Get a, get a hydrologist to, to back it up yeah. and maybe we'll do something. So that's what we need. Because if they actually were to mitigate their impact, it would have a massive, in my opinion, effect on the flooding in Mamaroneck. And it, it would be actually pretty, pretty huge. So 
I just want to be clear because it's a it's a little complex, and I can you know clean it up for you a little bit if you need. What, but specifically, what we because SLR did not address the through the highway. What they do is they stem. I mean, the throughway. What they do is they look at the effect of the river. Well, the river goes underneath the highway, so they just ignore the highway. But it has actually an enormous effect on flooding in the Merrimack. Thank you, Kristen. Okay. And I, I, I can check, but I think uh, yeah. our village engineer, village engineer has spoken with SLR about this. I, okay. I can confirm that. And uh, I think you received a, a copy of the letter, well, the Committee for the Environment did, of the letter that the village sent to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, and I, I, we got to move on. We got a lot more to cover. I, I need a motion. So move. Go ahead. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Elizabeth, you weren't here for the uh, uh, address to the board, so I'm going to give you an opportunity now. Thank you. Um, I lost track of the time, no excuse. I just had to rush over here to thank you for your service, Tom. You have done a magnificent job, in my opinion. You take the job very seriously, but you never take yourself too seriously. You keep a sense of humor. <laughs> And a sense of kindness and respect to everyone that comes before you and every issue that comes before you. You try to think of what it, what's best for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. God bless you. Good Thank seeing you. you. Okay, next is 5F. Uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks. Uh, we, we talked about this before. These are joint capital projects that all three municipalities uh, have a share in uh, because the projects benefit uh, the whole water system, the totality of the water system. Uh, the first up is the Waverly Avenue Bridge uh, water main replacement. Uh, when they, they're doing over the Waverly, Waverly Avenue Bridge, there's a water main that now goes under it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the this is the time now to, because uh, they, they can't rebuild the bridge where the water main is because uh, there's new wing walls so they have to put in a new water main uh, at that bridge because it's a 16 inch water main, which is you know, pretty substantial. Uh, and it's a $350,000 project. The village's share is $95,200. Uh, I need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. All right. Next up is another Westchester Joint Waterworks project. It's a shaft two chlorination, shaft 22 chlorination. Shaft 22 is, uh, New York City water. Uh, it is coming from uh, the uh, New York City reservoir system of state. This shaft uh, comes down through Yonkers. Uh, a while back, New York City stopped uh, or, or lessened the chlorination of the water coming down from the uh, reservoirs. So by the, by the time it gets to Yonkers, uh, it is diminished. So before it, it kind of makes a left and comes uh, into our community, uh, it has to be chlorinated again. So we, we, we have a facility in Yonkers uh, where they're adding a chlorination state, uh, station for the whole, uh, the whole three communities. Uh, so this is uh, the village's share. It's a million dollar project. The village's share would be $276,000. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, resolution accepting Westchester Joint Waterworks Joint Capital Project Redemption of uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks Garage. Uh, this garage uh, is right by the dam, uh, floods quite often. Uh, it has asbestos in it that needs to be remediated and other project uh, problems that need to be uh, addressed to keep it a viable garage. Uh, the cost of the project is $131,840. The village share is thirty-seven thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor. I have a comment. Uh, Minnesota, Minnesota five for Minnesota DPW. Here. Sorry, I've been standing here. Ah, okay, life goes on. Um, Minnesota five for DPW resolution Mr. authorizing. Mayor, you did not call for public comment. I, and right, I made a mistake. Please follow. No, you know you know I made a mistake. And I'm not going backwards. We're going forward. You could you do it. You could do it at the address to the board. No, I'd like to do it now. I know you'd like to do it now, but you don't get everything you want in this world. 
Okay. Uh, change order request to implement Department of Public Works enforcement module in municipal. Uh, this was explained. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Right. Okay. I need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor. All right. All right. Thank you. Surplus, surplus vehicles. Uh, resolution authorizing the sale of surplus vehicles. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vehicles. Uh, when the village uh, is done with the vehicle, it has to be auctioned off uh, to the highest bidder. Do I have any questions or concerns? Nope. Will we uh, authorize the sale? I'll second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. PD vehicles. Resolution correcting uh, November 13th resolution authorizing purchase of police patrol vehicles. Dan, you want to talk about this? Yeah, I, I had a brain lapse uh, when I wrote the resolution for the last meeting. Uh, I had said that it, there, it was funded through the general fund, but it's actually not. So uh, it has to be, uh, we're asking the board to um, revise the resolution to fund it through uh, the capital budget. Any questions, concerns? We'll have to, so we're going to have to issue debt to do that. Or yeah. or uh, uh, surplus, yeah. Or surplus, yeah. So and Dan, Dan, I got to tell you, you don't make too many mistakes, so I was surprised. Yeah. I'll try harder next time. <laughs> I made a mistake once. I know, I know that punch. Uh, I need a motion. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? All right. Uh, no. Next up is six A is communication on board. And once again, it's a three minute limit. Yeah, so I'll make comments about all the Westchester Joint and Waterworks. Um, you have three minutes, Mr. Teagan. Okay, can we start over then? No, just get, just get going. Okay, so on joint products, uh, projects, I'm not sure why this board is even voting. That's a the authority of the joint water works local projects. Yes, you vote on. But specifically, and I'm sure this applies to all these projects, were any of these done awarded under competitive curriculum as the law requires? Do you know, Mr. Mayor, do you sit on that board? Just so you, people know, I don't answer Mr. Teeger because anything you say to Mr. Teeger okay. gets used against so in a lawsuit. You, another during time. the work session, you discussed that part of the work on the last item yes, was due to Ida damage. And I'm not sure if you pay attention at the waterworks, but this is what the minutes said. It was emphasized that these conditions and the repair work being proposed are separate from and unrelated to the damage caused by Hurricane Ida. I did not so, say anything about Hurricane Ida. I said that the building floods. I never said okay, Hurricane Ida. Fine. Okay, so back to the question. Competitive procurement is designed to protect the taxpayers from malfeasance in the contract awarding. You probably awarded a million dollars in contracts here. Do you know if any of those contracts were awarded through competitive procurement? You don't, because if if um, what's your favorite phrase that um, let's come up with your law is foreshadowing or something? Westchester Joint Waterworks has never awarded contracts for construction work through competitive procurement. They give them and they award them based on the emergency contract, which by logic has very high prices in it. And it doesn't serve rate payers of the village of Mamaronek well. So I'm hoping under the new leadership in the village, this issue will be raised to the waterworks. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, uh, Amy Siskin again. I just have a question. We have a village manager who is also the highest paid village manager in the county. Um, a lot of folks during the pandemic were able to work virtually, but we're all now back in person. So my question is, are you planning to come and do what we're paying you to do? And part of these meetings every two weeks is addressing the community which hasn't in the last few meetings happened either. So I, I understand you've resigned at some future period in time, but until such time, I think it would be professional since you're the highest paid in the county for you actually to show up and do your job like the rest of us do. So I don't know what the plan is. I'm hoping the new mayor will enforce this, but um, I, I don't think we should be paying you if you're not showing up. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, anyone else? Okay. All right. Um, perfect. Okay. I lost my uh, reports from the clerk treasurer. Uh, I'll read this for you, Augie. Uh, file for the record, Library Board 10 resolution. File for the record, certificate uh, from Justice Gallagher for CGE records, and right. notice of resignation by village prosecutor. Apparently, the village is looking for a new village prosecutor. All right. Uh, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I missed the. Uh, you, yeah, you, you were there, but okay, but you can do it now. Um, so I attended the work session and this session. I didn't hear anything about the Waverly Avenue Bridge project. And, and the reason I'm asking that is we were all disappointed that the project was halted. I read the um, contract that was prepared by the town's attorney for getting the work done with between the town and the village. Has that been signed? Is the work going forward? Is there any report to the I think Nora brought that we, up in the world. Yeah, um, uh, so if you did, I, I, I apologize. I didn't start. We, so we, I didn't. we, we um, approved an agreement between the village and the town last Tuesday, the 21st, before before we had the um, second hunter tier presentation. But, you know, I. That agreement was, was negotiated uh, with by myself and the village attorney and village staff and Jane Eney, the supervisor of the town and her staff the night before election, uh, three and a half hours. And that was the agreement that was uh, approved the other night. I think it's on backup for the meeting of November 21st. It's on, right, it's on, it's on the website. Okay. It's backup, right? Wouldn't... The, yeah, that was been my yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, report from village attorney. Uh, minutes of the recreation. Minutes of the recreation and parks committee of October nineteenth, twenty twenty three. Minutes of the planning board meeting of June fourteenth and June twenty seventh, mm -hmm. July twelfth and July twenty sixth, September thirteenth and twenty seventh, and October eleventh, twenty twenty three. And minutes of the committee for the meeting of the environment on September 19th, 2023. Uh, okay, I just want to end by saying, you know, it, it has been a pleasure and a privilege uh, to be mayor of the village of Mamaroneck. Um, I uh, have enjoyed working with so many of you and getting to know so many of you. And uh, I, I, I will leave with nothing but fond memories. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck in the future. I wish the new mayor and the board, the best of luck in the future. I will not be one of these mayors uh, that sits on the sidelines and snipes. Uh, I will be one of those mayors that you can call up and get a confidential uh, opinion uh, anytime you need it. Thank uh, you. <laughs> and it, it, it has been a pleasure and a privilege and God bless you all. And I hope you all have an amazing holiday season. Uh, and your motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.